Hollywood can try. The problem is reality is just that much better. 34 races in and still no clear best, no clear favorite to win the Sprint Cup Series Championship. It is down to two. Two drivers, two races. Welcome to Phoenix. Here's a little ditty. It's called Where Rubber Meets the Road. You want drama? I'll give you a box office smash. It's an action flick, edge of your seat thriller. Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski absolutely side by side. Here's the plot. Only two races left in the chase. Two drivers with a shot at the cup and miles of opportunity. Your race right now, dude. Refuse to lose this damn championship. Someone's on hands to California, Mr. Rocket Roll. You know what they say about opportunity, right? That it's fleeting. Well, guess what? It's true. Listen, this moment will either define a career or elevate a legend. These guys know it. They just went door to door at the beat and banged their way to the finish. Keselowski diving back to the inside. Here comes Johnson even higher. They know at this stage, it's about more than fast cars. It's about being unshakable, unbreakable, and unforgettable. Back-to-back -back wins for the five-time champ. So throw out the bags and hunt down your place in history. Because when all else fails... We can do this. I want that victory. You gotta be true to you. Welcome to the penultimate round of the championship. And welcome to NASCAR's Quick Cup Series Countdown, presented by Tire Rack. Just two to go, with the top two in points separated by seven. Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski found the bar. They then met the bar and then they raised it. Brad Keselowski has certainly exceeded expectations. His average finish for the first eight races of the chase is 5.25. That is good enough for fifth best all time. Today he'll start 14th, which is better than Jimmy Johnson. Johnson will roll off 24, but here is where Keselowski is not better than Johnson through the first eight. And again, it's average finish, 4.88 for the 48. Good enough for second best all time. So as good as last year's battle between Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart was, are we actually seeing a better championship fight between Johnson and Kozlowski? Welcome to the ESPN Pit Studio. Inside, I'm Nicole Briscoe, alongside Rusty Wallace, Brad Doherty, and Ray Evernham. And I want to start with Ray because it's something that you said earlier this week that I can't get just off my mind. Jimmy Johnson has won five championships. He's gone up against Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Denny Hamlin, all these great names in this sport. Yet the guy who we've doubted, Brad Keselowski, might be his toughest, toughest competitor yet. And he may well be. And Jimmy doesn't have a lot of history on this guy. This is the new guy, and yet he's pushing the five-time champ every week, making him raise that bar. My concern is these guys keep raising the bar every week. Is that going to create a mistake that really hurts them? We've seen him on the verge of a mistake. Brad slid through his pits last week. Jimmy spins at Kansas. Is it going to go deeper into the team? Is the pit crew going to make a mistake? Is the engine shop trying to step up so much that, that somebody's going to break? Or are we going to continue to see these guys raise the bar and see more incredible racing like we saw last week at Texas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of those things. That, that's what makes this sport just so incredible. If you look at other sports, you can get LeBron. You can have Kobe go get you 30, 35, 40 to lead you to a championship. Tom Brady, Eli Manning, they can get you two or 300 yards, several touchdowns, lead you to that championship Aaron Rodgers too <laughs> they can lead you to that championship but in this sport you have a bad valve spring yep. you have a bad master switch you have a bad pit stop you go from winning and sipping the champagne to drinking Maalox, my friend, very easily. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you guys hit the nail on the head when it comes to mistakes, in my opinion. Hey, mistakes are going to be the big deal today. Who's going to make the first one? Is it going to be the 48? Is it going to be the two? Because I really think somebody will make a mistake. And let me tell you another thing to watch out for, where they might make a mistake. Is this back straightaway? It's mean. This racetrack is tough at this track. Another thing, it's time for no more Mr. Nice Guy They stuff, need to get mean, opinion. don't they? They need to get mean. They need to rough each other up they need to get on top of each other and make a show out of this thing because this mr nice guy stuff is getting me no mad more. i'm sick mr. of it dude. Nice what? Guy. Were, you, were you not watching last no week in man. texas if what was that if you think that was rough last weekend they need to get a lot rougher this week it's rough in here. Right <laughs> when we come back <laughs> i don't respect everybody like me i just hope they don't hate me I have a, a good friend that told me um, limits begin where the vision ends. With that in mind, I want to win eight. Sure, Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski have championship hopes in common, but that's about it. Two drivers, two teams, and two very different ways of going through this chase. Next, next. No more, Mr. Now.
NASCAR Sprint Cup Countdown is presented by TireRack.com. Research by Deliver Install Tire Rack. John's into the lead, 14 laps to go. New leader, 48. Win and championship lead to Jimmy Johnson of Martinsville. Yes, boys, yes. He'll take the checkered flag for the second time here in Texas. Jimmy Johnson trying to be a six shooter in the Sprint Cup Championship. Off the job, boys. Blinders on. A few more of these victories we got to get. We got a big one waiting for us. Five times Jimmy Johnson has hosted that trophy as the Sprint Cup Series champion. Right now, he's just two races away from hoisting it again for a sixth time. But there is a motto by which Johnson lives, and that motto has Johnson thinking beyond just a sixth title. Here's Hannah Storm. Great gallery here. We've put a bunch of images in here from our book on the road and then also some other images that we shot last year during the chase. Uh, the photographer took, I think, over 15,000 images. Wow. You know, we really wanted to focus on powerful images, certainly telling the story of what went on over the chase last year. And Jimmy had one task, and that was to name all the photographs for the exhibit. <laughs> so I was stuck on bend over at first. <laughs> And she found that inappropriate, so I she went to the, the yeah. second option was baby mama. Oh my god, baby but mama. even better. Yeah. That's really nice. Yes. I'm like, great. I'm assuming that when you're with Jimmy, you have to learn to have a sense of humor. Oh, totally. Well, and that my was sense what of was humor, so I'm funny. Sure I'm like, well, at least this is not so serious. I mean, we, it is an exhibit, but we are still having fun. In 2002, Jeff Gordon introduced Jimmy to Chandra Janway, who was working as a model in New York City. The couple married two years later, and in 2010, had a daughter named Genevieve. How old was she, Shandy, when you first brought her on the road? I think she was two months, I think. Yeah, that's I, about I right. Say, yeah, I think her first trip was, she was two months old. And right here, I mean, she's actually right in the middle of the action. She prefers that, um, yeah. especially pre-race. You can see here we are in victory lane. She's wandering around. Um, this is pre-race, the next image over. And she's so intrigued by the car and the uniforms and the chaos that she'll just wander around the car and check things out. I'll hop on a golf cart at a race, put her headphones on and drive to a corner and we'll watch the Nationwide Series or the Truck Series practice and just totally loves it. What's the pre-race ritual when you guys are on the road? I'll go out prior to do the intros and meet them at the car, say my goodbye, get in the car and, uh, and race. But it's not uncommon to be like, especially when she was smaller, in the sink of our bus, in my fire suit, helping bathe, getting her finished up as I hand her off to Shane. <laughs> See you in a little bit, I gotta go to the car. <laughs> when does that switch flip when your dad and then you become Jimmy Johnson, the racer? Really when we fire the engines. I've learned that, you know, once I strap in, put my helmet on, fire the engine, it's time to change gears and get into race mode. 2006 NASCAR champion. The second year in a row. His fourth consecutive. Yeah! You're looking at the five-time champion. Have you set your sights on the all-time mark, becoming the all-time greatest with eight? I have. I have a, a good friend that told me um, limits begin where the vision ends. So with that in mind, I want to win eight. I need to set a big mark out there because <laughs> I don't want I don't want to limit myself. So and I know you're not that's, afraid to say it. I'm not. In, in, I feel like it's, it's different than, you know, calling a shot. I mean, it's, it's a goal. I fully understand that it's a lofty one. And I don't know if it's possible to be done, but I have blown through every goal I've set for myself. My goal was to win a cup race. I have 58 and five championships. So I, I need to put that mark way out there and give me something of a chase. He had 58 when that interview was conducted. He now has 60, and there has never been a more dominant driver in the chase. Jimmy Johnson has won 25% of chase races. Now, Roger Federer, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, he has a 31% win rate in the slams that he's been in. Tiger Woods, 23% of the majors that he's been in. He has won. Michael Phelps, let's just forget about him because he's <laughs> ridiculous. But I want to go back to Texas. And there were a lot of people that noticed in Victory Lane in Texas, Jimmy Johnson was a bit more subdued. And he told his guys, blinders on, there's something bigger at the end of all of this. Yes, I'm going to tell you, Jimmy Johnson is absolutely 
a, a, a tremendous champion. He's a unique individual. But the interesting thing about Jimmy Johnson, as you look at those other greats, Roger Federer, Michael Phelps, Tiger Woods is the greatest golfer ever, ever. If you look at those numbers, you start to look at Jimmy Johnson's numbers compared to those guys. And the question that's in the future, obviously, mm -hmm. is are we looking at the greatest stock car driver ever? And the thing that's really interesting is they talk about Jimmy Johnson and his impact upon the sport. There are more mainstream casual sport fans who know who Jimmy Johnson is and knows more about this, know more about this sport because of Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the way he carries himself and has conducted himself as a champion. He has been an absolute blessing for this sport, I do believe. And some don't, don't agree with that, but I do think so. And Jimmy Johnson is the global champion. Yeah. He, 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 he's able to take not just driving the car, but his team, his competitors, the racetracks, he rolls all that into one. But the most brilliant thing that he's done is say, I want eight. Because now he's got his team f not focused on this race or focused on this championship. He's got those guys with a goal to stay together. He's got Chad Knauss motivated. He's got yeah. his guys motivated. He has a purpose now. They have an opportunity to do something that's never been done. And that'll keep those guys together and motivated. Sounds sure. silly, but you can't win eight unless you first win six and then right. seven. Yeah. Nicole, you know, you're talking about that victory lane at uh, Texas. Yep. With Jimmy Johnson, he looked like he was just real calm and not really excited. You know why, in my opinion? The guy wasn't surprised that he won the race. They had a car that good. He wasn't surprised because after he won the race, his mind immediately switched to, hey, look, i got to get to Phoenix. i got to keep this ball rolling, and i got to get to Homestead, and I can't make mistakes. Okay, fine, I've won. That's done. Now let's move on to the next. It wasn't, hey, let's air it all out. Let's celebrate. Let's go crazy. He stayed focused. I've watched this happen many times. I'll never forget the year I won 10 races. I was just like that. Okay, I've won nine. Now let's win 10. Let's move on. And that's what Jimmy's doing. That's what I'm seeing. Been there, they, done that. They ex exactly. They expect to win. Race that's fans, right. this is something for you. Check out Race Buddy. Log on to NASCAR.com slash Race Buddy to watch coverage live from Phoenix International Raceway. You can follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. And when we come back, Brad Kozlowski has quickly become the face of Penske Racing's Cup operation. Like it or not. What is it like to walk into the garage and see that every day? It's humbling and terrifying at the same time. Plus, the two and the 48 are going about this chase in two very different ways. Why it works and where it could mean trouble in these final two races. That's coming up next. Fourth win of the season, chase win number one, Chicago Land to Brad Kozlowski. Great job, everybody. Great job. I'm proud of you, everybody. Five previous tries here at the Monster Mile. Brad Keselowski's never finished better than 12th. Today he will win the AAA 400. Yeah! 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 Great job, everybody. No weakness, man. Hell yeah! All of that from a driver who, before the summer of 2011, had just one career win. And that came at a plate race where he led just the final lap. Well, look at him now. He's the brash, say-anything cup driver who's won five times this year. And Brad says he has his biggest competition's teammate to thank. Here once again is Hannah Storm. What a remarkable run for the young man from Michigan. Bring me the checker flag. Yeah! Hell yeah! You got a break in 2007, and you caught the eye of Dale Earnhardt Jr. I would like to uh, say that we're excited to announce that we're signing a two-year deal with Brad Keselowski as our driver. What did he see in you? Well, Dale at that time was looking for an answer to his race team and his company to, to be successful. He probably saw a hunger in me to do the same. I had a, a common goal to, uh, to make a name for myself and find a way to be successful. First-time winner, Brad Keselowski. It's awesome. This is it. This is what I've been dreaming of my life. What do you feel you owe him? I think I owe him to not take the opportunity that he gave me that no one else had to date and waste it. You said you were bothered when people booed you. It, it can be bothersome, yeah. Uh, because you want to just sit down and have a beer with him and tell him, no, you don't understand, <laughs> you know? You just don't get it, man. Let me help you. If you could sit down and have a beer with somebody who was booing you, what would you say? Well, first, I'd want to know why they booed me. <laughs> and second, I'd want to explain to them why I made some of the decisions I made that might irk them so they could maybe see it from my view. I don't expect everybody to like me. I just, 
Hope they don't hate me. <laughs> How about Brad Keselowski and this Penske Racing team finding a way to go off a win? Penske Racing is the most successful IndyCar racing team in history. But in 2012, Brad Keselowski has the chance to deliver owner Roger Penske his first ever NASCAR championship. He said it would be the biggest mountain he's ever climbed to win a NASCAR title. For him to say that's the biggest mountain he would have ever climbed is a testament to how hard it is to win a NASCAR. This is the iconic number two Miller Lite. This is the Blue Deuce. What was it like when you got this ride? Well, I remember almost feeling a, a bit ashamed, like I wasn't worthy, you know? You had to live up to this. Rusty and Kurt and, and Bobby Allison, and all drivers that have won for Miller, Beyond that legacy, of all the drivers that have drove it and have won races and championships, none of them have done it in this car. So I want to be that first guy. Today he will win and make another huge statement about his intent in this year's championship run. I just saw something on the wall over here. This is, it's like the ultimate fat head. Look at you. <laughs> Are you saying I have a fat head? <laughs> what is it like to walk into the garage and see that every day? It's humbling and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> I'm just not really comfortable seeing pictures of myself. I think they made me look about three years younger, which seems like it should be impossible to do, but they found a way. It's a shot that might scare small children. Uh, anyway, we said this about Casey Kane and Clint Boyer a few weeks ago. They're not supposed to be here right now. Well, the same could be said for Brad Kozlowski, especially if you ask the stats. Kozlowski keeps besting his best, though. Like, takes Texas, for example. He never finished better than 14th at Texas until last weekend. And, Rusty, you've been big on mistake-free racing. You mentioned it earlier. In fact, it's one of the reasons why you're kind of withholding judgment on Jimmy Johnson this season because of the mistakes that Johnson made at Pocono in Kansas. Uh, Brad Kozlowski simply doesn't tear stuff up. He doesn't tear stuff up. And because of that, Nicole, that's the reason this guy deserves to be here. He deserves to be the champion because, look, he's a young guy, no doubt about that. He's getting the job done on the racetrack, and he is surprising a lot of people. He's surprising me how good he's running, how well he's interacting with this race team, how much he cares and how much he wants it. But the guy that really deserves to be here, in my opinion, is Roger Penske. Mm -hmm. Penske has been there. He's done that. This man has paid his dues. He deserves to win this championship. He really does. You look at Jack Roush. You look at Rick Hendrick. You look at Richard Childress. You look at Joe Gibbs. All these guys that have won, Roger deserves to be right there, too. And this young kid does, too. He's driving the wheels off that car this year. Well, you said it, this young kid. And, and that's what I'm trying to get my mind around is, actually, who is Brad Keselowski? What makes him so effective? And I think you have to really look at the combination of he and his crew chief, Paul Wolf. They really do a great job. They have a very high racing IQ. And we were down in the garage area earlier, and it was interesting. The two cars right beside the 48, the two cars, we well documented, had this big beat boom box. And it was playing the loudest music. Boom you, box? Big boom back box. Back in And it was cranking. You could hear it everywhere. And I was laughing. But the whole, the whole ideology behind it is that they're not playing the, necessarily playing music that the 48 doesn't like. <laughs> it's that we're going to come up and ask the 48, what do you think about that? Yeah. So it's all this mind game, and then he goes out and he puts the hammer down. Very unique combination, very unique young man. They have their Walkman as well. Boombox. <laughs> <laughs> who he is? I'll, I'll tell you who he is. He's the guy that you're going to be talking about 10 years from now saying this guy has made the top 50 uh, drivers in NASCAR. This is a guy that you said Jimmy Johnson was maybe the best ever. This is a guy that takes – toe-to-toe -to -toe with him mm -hmm. every week. People are finding out who Brad is. I'm going to tell you, Brad's cocky on the verge of, of, of confidence, cocky, whatever you want to yeah. call it. He's not afraid to rough you up, but he also does it ethically. He'll rough you up without taking you out. He is a real racer. This is a guy who belongs to be here and will, if he doesn't win the championship this year, he will win I'll tell you one thing, he wow. needs to rough that 48 wow. car up a little bit today. <laughs> he needs to put a bumper to him and rattle him just a little bit. That's what's going to happen. Or the 48 needs to do it to the two. I think these two are coming right down to what's it. What's gotten into you today? I, I I'm down at Roger <laughs> talking to those guys today, and that's what they're talking but about. But it has been interesting to watch them because the 48 having to listen to the music that the two plays. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson has tried to play mind games a little bit with Brad Keselowski. He's done it in the past with guys like Denny Hamlin. But the two has reversed the role. A, a little bit. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Who's the best trash talker of all time? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind who that was. That was Dale Earnhardt Sr. 
Look, Senior would rough everybody up. He would wreck you, then come the next week and pat you on the back and try to be your buddy. He used to walk up to me and go, hey, man, are you feeling okay? And I'm going, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> well, what's wrong with your car? I said, nothing. What do you mean, what's wrong with my car? <laughs> and he tried to get in your head. I'm like, don't trash talk. Oh, Jedi mind trick. Me up. <laughs> you know, it took me a while to figure that one out. <laughs> really? it, did, it did get to me for a long time until I finally figured him out. Who's the, who's the best? I'm, I'm sitting two spots away from the best trash. The stuff that you said to me and Jeff, and you're going to call Earnhardt the best trash talker? You really? learned from him. He really? admitted it. You guys Earnhardt. had it coming, though, man. Really? You know that. You had it coming. Really? You guys don't know anything about trash talking. The best trash talker ever was a skinny little kid from French Lick, Indiana, <laughs> named Larry Bird, who could light you up and back it up. But one of the greatest stories ever in NASCAR was a former driver in Daytona 500 winner, Ward Burton, was having a problem with Jimmy Spencer. And Jimmy's a much bigger guy. Ward's a little guy. And uh, they thought it might come to blows at some point. And Ward Burton said in his Southern Virginian accent, I'm going to try to imitate Ward. Ward said, you know, he said, that Jimmy Spencer's a big old boy. But we get inside that race car, we both weigh 3,500 pounds. <laughs> that's a really terrible That's, funny. Thing, that's cool, man. As you can see. That's true. That's true, that's though. True. Trash talking is a fine art. Yes. But if done correctly, it can also be very effective. Here's Marty Smith. My daddy had a distinct southern philosophy about trash talk. Boy, he'd say, don't let your alligator mouth overrun your hummingbird ass. In other words, if you're going to flap that trap, you best back it up. Or you'll lose respect you'll never reclaim. Nobody likes a blowhard. I'll be pecking and a-poking, pouring water on his smoking. Then this may shock and amaze you, but I will destroy Joe Frazier. Effective trash talk is an art form. Verbal Van Goghs that combine a surgeon's skill and a serpent's tongue. President, we need a National Guard because we are killing the Patriot. Uh, 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 Down goes Frazier! A painter's eye, a comic's wit, the conscience of an assassin, and the smile of a beauty queen. Roger. And as trash talk goes, there's racing and there's everything else. Racing is immediate. There is no cooling off period or closed locker rooms. For racers, there's only the off-scorching heat of the moment. The tempers are hot. If you mess with the ball, you're going to get the horns. I don't care. I'll wreck as many cars as I need to. The Brian Vickers Matt Kenseth war is still ongoing. I jerk him by the hell and then just rattles cage a little bit. He's just a little girl about it. If you throw a rock, I'm going to throw a concrete block back. The 48 is testing my patience, I can tell you that. It takes a lot to make me mad, and I'm pissed. If he wants to play those games, he's going to get hurt. There are myriad approaches to successful jabber jawing. It can be overt. He's the most unprofessional little scaredy cat I've ever seen in my life. He better be worried, that's all I gotta say. He's about the most impatient thing. I'll be waiting when he comes in here. He needs a freaking whooping. And I'm gonna give it to him. He probably had a shot at going to the front and I just wanted to ruin that for him. He's a chump. Trash talk can be rude, even spiteful. It's probably not his fault, you know, his, his wife wears a fire suit and the family tells him what to do. I guess he's a never was is really the term that we need to bring up today. You don't pay attention, you don't know what he's doing. Michael wrecked me. Should be a commentator, probably not a race car driver. He just can't handle driving his car and knowing where he is at the same time. I was talking about kicking his ass because that's how I felt about it. He's uh, apparently stupid. Or it can be subtle, cunning. Like a mosquito bite, you don't know it hit you until it already hurt you. <laughs> In qualifying, we spun, and that put us in a bad position. Back there with the decrepit old has-beens, I guess. Well, they're really good, but they're really, really lucky, too. They have a golden horseshoe stuck up their ass. Don't touch I'm just trying to teach a little kid how to drive. Monkey could win in that car. I mean, it just doesn't, you know, it's not even testing her talents right now. Sometimes a man need not say anything at all to talk a big game. Wow. It's like Carl Edwards once told me. You can't back down. Otherwise, you're just a doormat. He come up there and try to spin me out twice. I didn't take it. Someone was pushing me around, and I don't like that. I hate that. I can't stand for that. I won't stand for that. Except being run over just once, you'll be run over forever. Zero respect. You gotta stay on your ground. That's not trash. That's gospel. That's walking the talk right there. Hey, Rusty, are you okay? I'm cool. Are you sure? I love it. <laughs> These guys get me jacked up. I'm liking it a lot. Are you sure you're okay? Why? What happened? <laughs> oh, oh, why did he come 
<laughs> the last time Brad Kozlowski out-qualified Jimmy Johnson, we were in Dover, and the two went to victory lane. Two on this. Brad K will start 14th, and Jimmy Johnson will start 24th. So how much of a challenge will that present for our title contenders? Keep in mind, this is just the third ever race on the new Phoenix. That is next. I got you. What exactly what is in sports, we like to throw around terms like battle, dogfight, and heroes. But on this Veterans Day weekend, we remember those men and women who know the real meaning of those words. They've lived it, and they've done it for us. That's the definition of honor. And that's why today, we do what we should do every day. We honor those who have honored us with their service. There are a number of Veterans Day tributes happening today That's at Phoenix awesome. International Raceway. Uh, a simple thank you, we have said this earlier, is, is not enough, but it is a start. So thank you for all that you do, our servicemen, our servicewomen, and of course, their families. What a blessing and a privilege to be able to sit here and do our jobs and have these great American heroes out protecting oh, yeah. our, our yeah. interests so we can sit here and have fun. Humbling. Awesome. ESPN has also teamed up with the USO as part of our salute to servicemen and women around the world. You can help by visiting USO.org slash ESPN and the USO Wish Book. There you can grant a wish for our servicemen and women or donate a gift to their families. Again, thank you. Heroes. Now, through the first eight races of this chase, the top 12 drivers have dominated victory lane, and it's been hard to ignore these guys, though, the best of the rest. Top of the list, Kyle Busch, who just so happens to be this week's Coors Light Polo Award winner, Dave. Nicole, it was seven years ago when Kyle won his only Sprint Cup race here, and then you come out this weekend and boom, practice, boom, practice, boom, qualifying. You win everything in practice. What's it going to take? to be on top for the end of the race today? Well, you got to have everything go your way. You know, obviously, we seem to have a fast race car. The M&M's Camry's been really good this weekend, and guys have done a nice job tuning on it for me. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep that going today. And you got to have solid pit stops, and you got to know what kind of strategy to take. You know, do you need fuel? Do you need tires? Do you need two tires? What, what all is going to happen? And then uh, having that right strategy when it comes down towards the end of the race is what's going to get you out front for that track position and uh, hopefully be able to win one. So we'll see how it goes. And, um, you know, if you're fast enough, hopefully you can pass some guys too. And if you need to, get up front that way. They've had the right strategy lately. Five, last five races, all four of them have been top fives for Kyle Busch. Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, back in March, Martin Truex qualified 25th, but drove his Toyota straight to the front, Martin, and you stayed up there, led 29 laps, had a great top 10 finish. Uh, today, you don't have as far to go to lead. You start second. Hey, I know this track changes a lot throughout the afternoon, but what's the key from a driver's standpoint to running consistently fast laps throughout the race? You know, I think the biggest thing here, especially with the track and the tires being pretty hard, is just not overdrive the car. It's very, very easy to get in the corner just a little bit too hard and slip and then lose a couple spots. So just being consistent all day, knowing what your car will give you and not going over that limit. Okay, good luck today. Thank you. Nicole, you know, Martin is the only driver in a chase who has never won a chase race. He hopes to change that here today. Well, this is just the third race on this new Phoenix. It made its debut last year in the chase. What makes it so tricky? Uh, it's very tricky. Mostly it's the back straightaway, Nicole. The track is really shaped different than it's ever been. You, it's a, got a little bit of compound banking in it, but take a look at this. This is coming off a of turn two, down the new back straightaway. They can race in the apron. They fly up on the racetrack. We went out on a racetrack today in a pace car, drove it again, and Brad, you got to admit, it's pretty abrupt back there. Yeah, it's pretty abrupt, especially with Rusty's driving, running about 140 miles an hour in a little pace car. But anyway, it's amazing. When you come off of the track, down onto the apron, so to speak, right there, it really jars you very, very hard. And the thing I really noticed the most are these corners are so flat. There's just not a lot of banking to grab that race car at these speed. And Brad, while I was in the back hanging on for dear life, <laughs> I noticed the difference between the black and the gray. Up in the gray yeah. there where some of that rubber was sitting, I could see the guys that got out of the groove yesterday had trouble, and you can see why. It's pretty slick up there. It is I slick. really do think Very a slick. lot of the action is going to be in the back, Nicole. That's where it's going to happen, that that's, new back straightaway area. That's yeah. why I stayed here and just waved at Don't you You're smart, obviously. Uh -huh. I want to go back to Kyle Busch for a second because he missed the chase by just one point. But in this chase, he's definitely found some momentum. We saw this sort of thing from Carl Edwards back in 2010 he ended the season on a high note then went into the 2011 season and we know what he did last year do you see that happening again but this time with Kyle Busch possibly next year keeping that momentum going I think without question Kyle Busch bounces back and is in the hunt again 
that we're talking about him possibly winning a championship. I mean, he, this young man has worked really hard on his demeanor. He has matured before our very eyes this season in his responses and his reactions. I think that's all going to make him better next season. And as Toyota gets their pieces and parts stronger, Kyle Busch is a wheel man. We all know that, and I think he'll be in the hunt again next year. And he had some frustration, I think, starting his nationwide team. I think he had some frustration with the mechanical issues that Joe Gibbs Racing has had, but they have found some speed here. And yes, as fast have. as he went around here Woo! the other day with after miles on, I would say he's got a good shot at turning his season around today. Guys, I tell you what, though, I mean, Brad and Ray, I mean, we say this every year about Cub Bush. He, at the end of the year, he'll maybe hit his stride a little bit and win some races, stuff like that. Now, he'll start next season. He'll go to Daytona, I'm confident, and flat fly and win some races, but then they get in that chase. And things go all to heck. But it's usually not him, though. It's not him. It's mechanical stuff. Yeah. But can they get rid of that stuff? That's can right. they finally get the ship, you know, That's righted right. and get That's this right. baby going in the right direction? Look, this guy is a great race car driver. He can flat get it done. But that team has got to quit making those stupid mistakes with mechanical problems. Yeah. they got to keep him in the hut. This kid can win a championship, no doubt about it. Yes. That is next That's year. Right. Kyle Busch, though, will start on pole today. And by the way, Denny Hamlin, he will start third. Look out for that team wow. today. When we come back. But a good job, Jimmy. The only car faster than us currently is the leader. Remember our talk we had about these tires. Just take care of your stuff here, okay? About all Kozlowski and Johnson have in common these final weeks is the fact that they're fighting for a championship. Ray Abraham breaks down the huge differences between the two teams. Next. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway and welcome back to NASCAR Sprint Trip Series Countdown presented by Tire Rack. 34 down, two to go. And while mathematically 10 drivers are still eligible for the championship, realistically it's down to just two. Jimmy Johnson versus Brad Keselowski. Two drivers who over the last eight races have not only met the bar set by Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards one year ago, they perhaps raised that bar. But how? And why does it work between Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson and Paul Wolf and Brad Keselowski? R. Ray Everham steps out of the pit studio to break it down. The communication between the coach and the athlete, key to winning in any sport. It's no different in our sport. It's the communication between the crew chief and the driver. Today, we're going to look at two of the best in the business, Team 48 and Team 2. Vastly different styles, equally successful. But a good job, Jimmy. The only car faster than us currently is the leader. Let's look at the 48 dynamic. It's Chad Knauss. He's the team leader. One pit stop at a time. One handed, one can of fuel, one jack post, one luck nut, one lap. On the 48, Jimmy Johnson lets Chad make the decisions. Get by a couple of these guys, you're right back in this mix. Here on the two car, these guys are kind of a partnership. Cowboy. Hey, Paul, are you nervous? Hey, Benny, you're nervous. Ultimately, Brad Keselowski, the driver, makes the calls on this team. I'm good enough, Paul, that if you give me the lead, I'll drive away. Three C's, right? Confident, calm, conversational. These guys do that. Everybody's in trouble now, man. I'm just now turning on my air conditioner. This year's chase has had a fuel mileage theme. The teams that have managed the fuel mileage best have been up front. We've seen the 48 and the 2 work really hard on the radio conversations to get this done. We've got to do that for 40 laps, 80%. He's given him exact numbers now. He knows he's got to be 80% throttle for 40 laps to make it. Slows down. You see him giving up spots there, but he was able to hang on and finish the race without having to pit. Same race. Now we're going to look at the two car. I got you a box right there, bud. They were able to advance their position and pass the 48 for the lead while saving. They're going to play the strategy just right. Brad Kozlowski wins at Dover. Great run saving fuel at Dover, but the very next week at Charlotte, two cars up front, running good. They start to stretch the fuel to prepare for the end of the race. Did you get us a lap, you think, through that run? Got us about five or six saves. This maybe was caused by a little bit of overconfidence. They've been so good about this all year long. When you're gambling with a quarter fuel, that communication about how much the crew chief needs and how much the drivers save, really important. There's a turn of events. 
coming into Kansas on the new pavement. Lots of issues. Critical day for the 48 team. Trouble at turn number four. Jimmy Johnson breaks loose. Jimmy Johnson has hit the wall in turn four. Well, get her into the garage here. Chad Canal says get her into the garage, but he changes his mind, which may have changed their whole season. Well, we'll stop here in their pit. Maybe we can keep our laps lost to a minimum. This is one of the most amazing jobs on top of the pit box that I think I've ever seen. Guys, get that bear bounce, start getting that seam. Get that right side seam, the right side seam. He is in control of the radio now. The team knows that they now have to go to hand signals. Nobody talks on the radio but Chad. Get the bumper bar cut off. We have to get that bumper bar cut off. Finished on the lead lap, got the car in the top 10, all because of the calls and the communication on pit road. Jimmy Johnson's team keeping this car in the hunt. That's pretty remarkable. Martinsville, Virginia, shortest track of the year, shortest time to make a decision. Are you okay if I make the call? Paul's really not okay. He wants to pit. I mean, there's still going to be about 20 laps to race, but whatever you think here. You can see Paul wanted to pit. If he believes in it, he's got to sell it harder. All right, we stayed out here. Kozlowski stays out. The two car stays out. In my opinion, that's a time when the driver's got to trust the crew chief. Paul had more information to make that decision than Brad. Turned out okay for him, but could have turned out bad. You're out there on old tires, he could have got spun out. Johnson to the lead, 14 laps to go. Last week, Texas Motor Speedway. Brad makes another call, contrary to what Paul is thinking. I can go with four here, don't you? Talking about four tires on the radio, and then our friends on the two car switch to their digital radio. Brad is convincing Paul to just take on two tires and get him out front. Oh, uh, you got what you wanted. He got what he wanted, but it wasn't what Paul wanted, and I'm gonna tell you, I wasn't so sure it was the right thing to do. Refuse to lose this damn championship. Nobody drives a car harder on two tires or no tires, but I think it might have cost him the win. Two completely different ways of communicating, but each team has a leader. Important, somebody makes a decision, the team follows it. You do that consistently, and guess what? You get the last C, the championship. Two very different styles, two very different relationships as these two drivers fight in these final few races to get that trophy. Tell us what you think. Do you agree with Ray's breakdown of the two and 48 teams? You can join our conversation on Twitter at NASCAR ESPN with the hashtag Pit Studio. And then, as always, tweet us your seats. Some great Ooh, views from inside the track today. That's excellent. I think the pit, the, that was oh, the that's pit a good studio, one that's yeah. like up here. That's it's one of the best that's views what in the we house. Rock that's what we're rocking up here. It's going to be a great day here at Phoenix. Beautiful. And when we come back, we have talked about them. Here's something. How about we talk to them? Brad Kozlowski and Jimmy Johnson join us live next as we roll on from Phoenix. I'm still trying to figure out what was going on with Marty Smith's hair. NASCAR Sprint Cup Countdown is presented by TireRack.com. Research by Deliver Install. Tire Rack. Don't ever question the heart of a champion. Landers on, boys. Let's go to work. We can do this, man. Be smart here. Help me out. Tight corner, tight corner, tight corner. Wow. Wow. Get Keselowski the lead. Oh, trouble. Mark Martin. I thought the old guy come out every time we're in a good position, Jeff. Shake that off now, buddy. Now's your opportunity. Refuse to lose this damn championship. Two laps to go. Jimmy Johnson clears around the outside. Good job, everybody. Can't do anything when somebody's hand is a race time after time. Off the shelf, boys. Blinders on. A few more of these victories we got to get. We got a big one waiting for us. No. Don't ever question the heart of a champion. I'll tell you what, if Phoenix is half as good as what we saw one week ago in Texas, we are in for one heck of an afternoon. Just a little less than 30 minutes away from green flag here. I will say this, after watching those last few laps in Texas, I personally view Brad Keselowski differently, and I'm curious, am I the only one that, that thinks that way? No, I think it's interesting. And for me, I've been trying to figure out who this, this young man is. Who is Brad Keselowski? I mean, we see, obviously, the unique talent and all those types of things, but it sounds crazy, but I'm almost looking forward to next year. 
because I want to see, I want to see if he can continue to grow. Is this the real Brad Keselowski, or is this just a, a pipe dream? I, I, I really want to know. But isn't that a little unfair? Because we kind of said that about him last year when he kind of came out of nowhere the last half of last season, and he finished fifth in the but championship he wasn't fighting last for year. A he wasn't fighting for a championship. But he wasn't supposed to be there last year either. I know it. it I, that's why I want to see. Can he back this up next year? I know we're talking about today, but I want to see. Can he back it up? But the other thing I have to say, he's going to have to be very aggressive, though. He needs to get up and race Jimmy really hard. Yes. He needs to rough Jimmy up because no one Thank goes you. after Jimmy. And I think that could be the Achilles heel if he can actually get up and put a fender to him. You guys are something. You just want to <laughs> see one guy rough up another guy. The guy that takes you got the circumstance and opportunity. That's right. Circumstances are going to provide opportunity. You heard Chad say it. You got two really talented teams, one with a little bit more experience than the other one. Whoever makes the most of those opportunities and roughs the other guy up a little bit. Because <laughs> Jimmy's all about precision. Well, He's all about what? precision. Brad, Brad got a little bit rough last week. Now, Brad doesn't go over the line, but I also think, and I heard you say it, that that, that tone has been set. Yes. And now, now Jimmy... Right. Jimmy knows that it's okay to use the bumper in this deal a little bit. Yeah, can, I I agree. can I remind you guys one more time? Yeah, you roughed everybody okay. up. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you again, this thing's going to come down to mistakes. Yeah. They can't make mistakes. Both yeah. of these guys are talented drivers. They got to where they are. They can't make mistakes. Is it a mistake if he doesn't move, Jimmy, though? Is that a mistake? If he gets close if enough to him, it gets late in the day, it is a mistake if he doesn't move him. Because wow. you know what? NASCAR says these cats go out to rough each Have other it. up, and they're not going to do anything about it. So if I was them, I do it. I just now, one surprised. thing I want to say to you about yeah. when you're talking about Keselowski, is he real deal? You know, look at Carl Edwards last year. Good point. He wins this. He, I mean, he was right there winning that's, this that's championship. What I'm about. He yeah. was tied. Look yeah. what happened to that's him. Right. I'm not that's second right. guessing Carl that's Edwards' right. talent. Real quick, uh, we saw an issue yesterday in the Nationwide Series race. It started in qualifying for Elliott Sadler. He made a mistake in mm -hmm. qualifying, uh, hit the wall, qualified poorly. Jimmy Johnson did not qualify all that great here today. In fact, this is Johnson's sixth worst starting position in 89 chase races. Yeah. And some history, he finished 15th or worse yeah. in three of those. Is this a mistake by Jimmy Johnson to qualify 24? No. This guy's good. These guys worked hard on their chassis setups. Look, Brad's qualified 14th. That's not good either. Still in front of him. Yeah, it's still in front of him. It's still not good, though. These guys know how to get to the front, and they will, although... This racetrack is going to be test your ability on that back straightaway. Yes. They've got to be really careful back here because that thing is mean. It's treacherous. I'm not a big fan of the design of that back straightaway, and those guys probably aren't either, so they got to respect it. So they gotta be they got to be careful, and they can't hang out with the wrong guys too long as they're trying to pass them getting through this field up to the front. It's a little bit of a mistake. No, no I'm not going to say it. it is not a mistake where they qualified. See, I'm concerned. They're focusing on their chassis. I right? am concerned just because of what you said, hanging out, racing guys that you shouldn't be racing. Right. And what happens with that? you got 41 other competitors who have their own agendas, who have their own race, and are trying to get it done on a racetrack that's hard to pass, very slick, and very, it could just be treacherous. I'm concerned for that 48 today. Well, I'm concerned because I feel like I'm hanging out with the wrong guy. Hey, look, we're not, I mean, no slam to Elliott Sadler and those guys, but that's a nationwide team that's only been together two years, okay? Yeah. You know, you're talking about five-time champion and probably the best team in motorsports. I think they're going to be okay. I think they've got a plan. They know how to take care of that car. They'll do the right strategy to get that thing to the front. I think the race is still going to be settled between the two and the 48. All right, okay. Crew Chief, so what All is right. the strategy? What do you do if you're Chad Canal? You know, you've got to do what others don't do to get in position. We saw yesterday that track position is going to be very critical, so playing the tire game, the fuel game correctly as the race unfolds is going to be key. I, I want to ask you guys this. It's been the kind of the theme of what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. We're not asking you to pick a winner because at, at this point, the only thing that really matters is, is who wins the championship. You were dead on yesterday. All three of you selected Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to leave this race as the points leader. So who leads today as the points leader? I'm going to pick the two car to lead today. I'm not picking the two car because I used to drive the two car. I'm picking the two car because I'm picking the two car because he's got a brand new car. I've talked to the crew chief. Their cars are handling good. They think the 48 car is in trouble. I think they're in the 48 car's head just a little bit, and they're very, very confident. 
We were just down in the garage area a little while ago talking to them, and they were really pumped up about their car. The two car will be leading at the end of the day. Two car leaves, leaves here today as the leader. I'm concerned about the 48 car getting through traffic. They did not do very well in practice. They were a little bit off. I think the two car leaves here. We go to Miami, belly to belly, man to man. I think the 48 leads, but by a lot less now. Oh, 48 man. leads, 48 leads by three when we leave here because I think the two cars got a little bit better car for this race. I'm sure Excellent. Jeff Gordon won't be leaving. I'm excited and I Maybe. certainly <laughs> hope that you are excited as well. When we come back, Alan Bestwick, Dale Jarrett, and Andy Petrie get into the mix for pre race ceremonies plus pressure. Can you imagine the pressure of being a week away from a potential championship? That's coming up next. I can't believe Ray didn't say Jeff Gordon. The final two races of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season are at hand, and the semifinal round will play out in the desert southwest at Phoenix International Raceway, where a sellout crowd has turned out to see how this race will play out and how this race will play into this tremendous championship fight. Let's hear from the top two title contenders. We start with Jamie Little. Well, Alan, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen a very focused and a very intense Jimmy Johnson, even in victory lane. Jimmy, how does this championship battle right now compare to years past? Um, it reminds me a lot of the championship battle I had with Jeff Gordon. You know, we were tit for tat through the whole chase, and I saw some stats on uh, the average finish that Brad and I have right now. It's really, really close to what Jeff and I had in that year. So uh, it's been intense. It's been a lot of fun at the same time. And I think last week, um, you know, in the hard racing at the end kind of showed, you know, how, how hard we're both willing to race for this thing. And uh, we'll see how today goes. You know, our, our qualifying effort isn't what we wanted, but uh, we have a great race car, and we'll work our way to the front and be smart. All right, thanks so much. Jimmy Johnson continuing his, his quest for his sixth championship, Vince. And the man pursuing him is this man, Brad Keselowski. This track has been tough on Brad, history says. Average finish 22nd, but you were fifth here in the spring. You had a good run yesterday in the Nationwide Series. A lot of talk about why you ran the Nationwide Series race yesterday. I know the sponsor commitment, but what did you learn from that race that you can apply today? Well, Vince, you know, uh, track conditions are really changing, especially on a track that's been uh, recently repaved. Uh, like Phoenix has. So it's another opportunity to learn about the track, uh, learn a little bit about myself too and how to react to it, uh, and take advantage of that to hopefully apply to today. Congratulations on a uh, good run so far. How you feel about going in? Uh, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, you know, we've had decent speed. The Toyotas look really fast, but uh, you know our cars always seem to find that extra little bit at the end of the race, so I'm looking forward to it. But uh, you know, first and foremost, I want to say happy Veterans Day to all those veterans out there, and we appreciate your service as well. Thanks, Brad. Alan? Vince, thanks. And topside, Alan Bestwick with the 97 winner of this race, Dale Jarrett and champion crew chief Andy Petrie. Those top two in the championship, a pins and needles day for them? Oh, absolutely. They both start on the outside of their rows. This is a, a racetrack that has a very narrow groove, even though you can go too wide. The problem is the penalty that you pay for getting outside of those two lanes, it could be very severe. Tear your race car up, lose a lot of spots. Yeah, they're nervous about what could happen today. Yeah, there's a lot of things out in this desert that can reach out and bite you. This, this track <laughs> is one of them, and that, that groove being so narrow and so slick it'll widen out as the day goes but early on it's going to be very very tricky be interesting to see how the day unfolds with these two championship contenders within the field of 43 that will contest for the win at phoenix of course it's veterans day and uh, the all-american sport of stock car racing born and bred in the usa as always paying tribute to and supporting those who serve and have served we add our thanks and thoughts to all of those in our armed forces today that will of course be part of the opening ceremony we go trackside for it now ladies and gentlemen at this time we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as luke air force base honor guard presents our nation's colors please remain standing as phoenix international raceway chaplain ken bowers offers this afternoon's invocation thank you heavenly father that in the race of life you never give up on us we may have had a poor start in our youth and qualified weakly. We may have too many handicaps upon us physically. We may have spent too much time in the pits. But if we keep our hand in yours, we can continue to race strong. Thank you for our veterans, for our day here at PIR, and everyone said amen. Now here to perform America the Beautiful, please welcome to the lead singer of Lost Trailers, Jason Wyatt. Oh, beautiful, for spacious sky, for amber waves of rain. 
for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain America America God share his grace on thee oh and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shine nay see oh and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shine Ning si. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome multi platinum singer songwriter JoJo as she performs our national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Those F-16s from Luke Air Force Base here in Phoenix. The great opening ceremony. And now we're set for race number nine of ten in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Quick and loans on this Veterans Day, saluting some amazing veterans, those who accomplished amazing things on the racetrack. Some of NASCAR's greats after serving our country in the armed forces. Brian Newman's car carrying today 250 pictures of active and retired military who also happen to be customers of that sponsor. Our quick and loans amazing at Phoenix today. Who'll be amazing on the track at the end of 500 kilometers? The engines fire and the green flag waves at Phoenix next. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Phoenix is brought to you by Sprint. Say no to sharing. Say yes to Sprint with truly unlimited data. Visit Sprint.com slash speed. Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL and Bank of America. Manner. The cup is right there, so close, you can almost touch it. But the person in your way, well, he's not really a person. He's a legend, the greatest of his generation. So how do you outrun him, outgun him? Yeah, if you figure that out, beat the unbeatable man then you truly deserve to be called a champion. Brad Kozlowski's strategy so far has been to give no ground and match the five-time champ race for race in the chase. Been a terrific championship thus far. And now the semifinal round within the 43-car race today on the tough Phoenix International Raceway Mile. 
One of the stories of this championship thus far has been Kozlowski qualifying poorly and having to overcome the dangers of bad track position to try and keep matching Johnson stride for stride. Today, both of them are starting back in the soup. Yeah, but I like where the two cars started. That's not a bad starting position. 14th, although he's starting on the outside. That's not too bad. And he doesn't have the pressure of having that 48 car on the pole up there and trying to close this gap all day and worry about trying to catch up. He's already in front of him. I think he can take his time. I think he's got a good enough car to get there and actually take the lead before uh, we get to the end of this race, probably just by passing cars. Yeah, and we've seen Jimmy Johnson do amazing things at this racetrack and passing cars coming back from adversity. But they are right in the middle. This racetrack is going to be at its very worst when this race starts as far as the level of grip. He's in a very vulnerable position back there. He's going to have to be careful, make sure that he doesn't make a mistake and the people around him aren't making mistakes. Oh, yeah, by the way, only two of Jimmy Johnson's 60 victories have come whenever he started outside the top 20. Well, they both have a big challenge ahead on what will be a very slick, slippery, difficult racetrack, this Phoenix Raceway, reconfigured for this race a year ago. And by the way, talking about Kozlowski having a car to drive to the front, one of the differences between the two in this championship so far, those bonus points for leading laps and leading the most laps four of the seven point gap between them in the championship are the four more bonus points johnson has earned for those laps spent out in front we'll find out how it all plays out today in phoenix after we go trackside to get them fired up and now for the most famous words in motorsports please welcome your grand marshals from advocare president and ceo richard wright and vice president of distributor relations sherry wright Spark your engines! Your wheel funny is right now, I can't see it. A little product placement twist on tradition. And we are ready to go with the Advocare 500 at Phoenix, the second to last race of the season from one of the prettiest settings in sports. Our ESPN in-race reporter today, the always entertaining Clint Boyer. You never quite know what Clint's going to say. For example, last Sunday in Texas, when on the pace laps, he very humorously summed up his title prospects against Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski. We just got to pass this 48. It's just put three cars in front of me somehow put some distance in between him and the two and go back after the championship. You know, for a sport that spends all its time moving forward, boy, they sure don't like change. Especially when you start messing with one of their racetracks. Yeah, there's risk in a new surface, a new layout. But when it works, oh, baby does it ever work and phoenix yeah it works it's different than before faster than before but just as entertaining it does work phoenix international raceway where race nine of ten in the chase for the nascar sprint cup is set to begin in just moments the field of cars about to roll out onto this mile racetrack to get underway. As we start the day, we look at the uh, championship standings, preparing for the race, and how uh, the drivers are uh, in rank. Brought to you by Doomsday Preppers on National Graphic. You see the seven point gap, Jimmy Johnson to Brad Kozlowski. And then Clint Boyer, 36 points back, still in the hunt, but needing a little help to try and track down these top two. That's how we prep for Phoenix. Brought to you by Doomsday Preppers. Clint Boyer, our ESPN in race reporter for the day, roll it out. Hey, Clint, Dale Jarrett here. Uh, you were so entertaining last week, had to bring you back, man. So uh, our mailbag question comes from Mike in Albany, New York, and he's referring to your three wins and great season. He said, you've had a great first season with Michael Walter Racing and the 15 team, and arguably your best season yet in Sprint Cup Racing. Did you ever think success would come so fast with a new team? You know, there was a lot of potential there. Obviously, saw a lot of upside, but no, never in a million years. Uh, what I think that would all come together this early. Just really proud of everybody on this 5 Iron G Toyota, Brad, Patty, and all the guys on this 15 car. Doing a great job. We've come a long ways in a short amount of time. Uh, like you said, three wins and, and, you know, still compete for a championship. We've hit all of our goals. It's been a great year, a lot of fun so far. So it ain't done yet. Got two more to go. Big day right here in front of us. 
Yeah, it is a big day, Clint. You still have a, a shot at this championship. Let's talk about this racetrack. Uh, we've seen a lot of things happening throughout the weekend, practice uh, with crashes and things like that. Uh, this place is uh, pretty treacherous today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, this repave, this is a fun racetrack. One of my favorite racetracks, uh, you know, of the year. So, uh, since the repave is super, super slick, I think that today, you know, it's a little bit hotter than we've had in the practice sessions. It's going to be even worse today. You're going to have to have a good handle on your race car. you got to have that thing hung out and freed up to be good on a long run, but you can't have it too hung out to where they go by you on a restart. So, you just got to play your cards right, be better than the other guys, and, and hold on to this thing. Your restarts are going to be wild. You're going to see some action. I told Brad, he goes in sixth in the fifth in the first lap. Be holding on because I'm probably going to run right into him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clint. Thanks once again for talking with us. You have a great day now. Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Brian Patty. Right. Hey, Brian Patty. Andy Petrie. Glad you're with us again this week. Hey, uh, got a question for you. We watched the race yesterday. Didn't seem like four tires really did much for the car, and uh, we didn't see many of those yesterday. What will we see today with these cars? Well, obviously, the cup cars have a lot more power than the nationwide, but uh, you're, you're going to see everything. You're going to see people staying out. You're going to see people taking gas only toward the end. Two tires held about me, left or right, uh, and but four tires whenever you need gas. Uh, so it, it's going to be quite entertaining. It's going to hopefully be on the we'll be on the winning end of the strategy uh, today. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's always entertaining with playing in that race car, I'm sure. But, hey, uh, you know, you've been a crew chief for a lot of different organizations and different series. What's, uh, and this is probably your best series, uh, best season ever. What are you, uh, what's different over there at Michael Walter Pricing? I don't know. Uh, it, it's hard to explain. It's just a, it's a great group uh, full of racers from top to bottom. And that's what it takes here in this series. Make sure everybody's pulling in the right, right direction and all, all one direction. And uh, we're doing that. We're doing it very well. Uh, it's great to have a driver that uh, you know talks to you and understands how you're coming, where, where you're headed, um, and we're all on the same page, and that, that's key. Okay, we'll keep you on the same page today, Brian. Thanks for talking to us, buddy. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Our ESPN in race reporters, Clint Boyer and his crew chief, Brian Patty, are over the wall camera today with J.D. Holcomb, the front tire carrier for Jeff Burton. Hoping for a great day today here at Phoenix. Have a good one, J.D. Burton's car will have to go to the back of the field for the start. They have had a couple of incidents this weekend. They're actually in the car. They originally rolled out. They went to the backup. They went back to the primary. It's a long story. We'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> a look at our high-definition onboard cameras. It'll take you inside the Phoenix action today. Brad Kozlowski's got the Dodge on board. Big picture, and uh, have a great day, guys, on a pit road. Paul, great leadership down there. Thanks. Sir, boss, I'll do my best for you. Close this deal out. There you go. The captain on the radio, Casey Kane, has got the Sprint on board. Danica Patrick, the GoDaddy.com camera. Denny Hamlin, the fresh from Florida Gulf Seafood on board. With Tony Stewart carrying a GoDaddy.com camera. It's Clint Boyer with a five-hour energy camera. And Jimmy Johnson with the Lowe's on board. I'd like to say hello to all the veterans. Thank you for everything that you've done for us over all of the years fighting for our freedom. We appreciate it. Echo that so much, Chad Knaus. And our final onboard camera, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is carrying the Chevy on board today. Stories from Pit Road. Here's Dave Burns. Alan, Jimmy Johnson qualified 24, so are they okay? Chad Knaus told me they left the car a lot like it was here in March when they led 55 laps and finished fourth. I believe they can hold their championship lead today. Vince Welch. In a championship battle like this one, the smallest difference can make the biggest difference. And that's why no detail goes un unlooked and uncovered. The pit box for the uh, two car, Brad Keselowski today, the same exact pit box he used in the nationwide race yesterday. Just an added bit of familiarity enhanced by the fact Brad will have an open pit box on entry and exit that they believe can make the difference today. Alan? Vince, thanks. 500 kilometers the distance, 312 laps on this one-mile track. Kozlowski starting back in 14th spot. Jimmy Johnson back in 24th. Green flag at Phoenix.
So Truex from second on the start, now back to seventh. We saw that yesterday in the NASCAR Nationwide Series race here. That outside lane on starts and restarts is a little dicey. Yeah, and this the most that this racetrack has set without a car being on it. Nothing's happened here today. Expect this to be the most difficult time for these drivers to negotiate this place. Yeah, it seems like that outside lane can work, but if you try to be aggressive out there, you just you lose every bit of the grip, and it just you saw what happened to Mark Truex. And there's that dog leg on the back stretch. Where now with that fresh paving on the inside where one time before the reconfiguration there was grass and people cut the corner every now and then sometimes it works out better than others. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, it was an interesting spot yesterday. We even saw two cars at one time below that. So we'll see all kinds of action there today. 1716 Kenseth and Biffle side by side. Biffle just kind of tiptoeing out there trying to make it work. Yeah, he's one of those cars that's already been into the wall here this weekend. Trying his best not to make that happen again, but you, you have to be somewhat aggressive. You don't want to lose too many spots. Everybody gets down to the bottom. That's the only place that you can pass right now. Kyle Busch leads. Denny Hamlet is second. Casey Kane is sh shuffled out third. There's Biffle getting wide, just like uh, you're alluding to, and slipping back. One, two, three cars by, and maybe a fourth. Yeah, not only do you lose those spots, right then but you go down to the next corner your tires aren't cleaned off very well then so you're gonna have to kind of tiptoe through that part too look back through the top 15 and brad kozlowski in the two running in that 15th spot yeah he ran that first lap a little bit conservative he was on the outside i didn't see him really charge out there like he tried to see if he could hang on the outside of Logano for a lap. Didn't work, and he kind of just found a hole behind him and, and uh, gave up a couple of spots. That 56 car has got troubles. Martin Truex Jr. off the pace on the inside. Started on the front row. It's almost like that engine's laid down. You can see it's just not pulling. Yeah, the way they, they, that he yeah, kept pace. Sure on both batteries. He kept pace in the corners and yeah. he's getting left on the straightaways. Yeah, they're trying to just diagnose what the uh, issue might be. They're starting with the electrical. That's something they can switch. They can switch batteries, uh, maybe help that. If it's internal, obviously, they can't do anything about it. I thought I saw a little smoke there, too. In the race here back uh, the beginning of March, there were some engine problems on account of a couple teams, but it was very late in the race. Yeah, it's very early. I mean, this is something that if they have a problem now, there's something brewing in practice. Spot for Keselowski there up to 13th around Carl Edwards. Marco Ambrose in the nine, starting to work on the 99. Ambrose was one of the people who suffered an engine problem in that March 4th race. He was running third in the closing laps, and it went away. Clint Boyer there in the 15, also in that fight for a spot. Get an update from the pits on what happened to Martin Truex Jr. Jamie, what are they saying? Well, they're trying to figure that out right now, Alan. And Martin Truex just came on the radio and said, I'm getting slower and slower. What should I do? Chad Johnston, his crew chief, said, stay out as long as you can. Let's hope for a caution. And they're saying they're going to bring him in right now and diagnose it. Yeah, that's kind of shell shock. I mean, as the race starts, you don't expect to have an engine problem. But that thing came by here. You can tell it was definitely on uh, no more than seven cylinders. He had slipped back to ninth in the opening couple of laps, then this, and now Truex Jr. headed to the pit lane. Yeah, it don't, it don't sound any better. So. And that is a very tough break, a team that had a lot of high hopes for today. So here come your top ten on the way through. Brad Kozlowski in 13th. And with Jimmy Johnson running in 20th, remember that at basically one point per position in the race, that's what Kozlowski needs to happen all race long to try and gain some ground on Johnson, if not move ahead of him, ahead into the final race of the season. Yeah, I think it's extremely important to, if Brad Kozlowski is really going to go to Homestead, a legitimate shot, that he finish in front of the 48. If that's just one spot, something that keeps him no more than those seven points that he started this day behind. 
by Joey Logano in the 20 for 12th spot. This two was really good in practices yesterday. I expected to see him kind of take it easy here at the start, knowing how slippery this racetrack is going to be. But his car showed to be really good. Uh, it was fast and really good in long runs. Yeah, I talked to Paul Wolf in the garage this morning. He said he just wished, almost wished he had another practice session because they made so much headway in each of the practices yesterday that he, he said he felt like he could have made it even better yet if they could have had another one. But he felt good about the car. And as much as these two, Kozlowski and Johnson, have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe for the championship in these last couple of races, they're the two guys passing cars yeah. in these opening 14 laps of the race. Just underway with the AdvoCare 500 at Phoenix. Remind you to check out NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy and watch coverage live from Phoenix today by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Jimmy Johnson heard from his crew that his lap times were just a couple of tenths off, so they will make a wedge and air pressure adjustment, change two left side tires, try to give Jimmy a little more comfort entering the corners. It was a little edgy on the first few laps as well. Vince Welch. Brad Keselowski says it's just a little bit too tight. They're also going to clean the grill. Left side tires only, no other chassis changes. Oh, he stalled it as he was exiting the pits. Got to have a push. And the 48 goes by him. Rusty Wallace said on NASCAR Countdown about mistakes. There was one. That's yeah. a very small one, but it could lead to bigger things. Yeah, that was a big mistake to me. I mean, he, was, he needed to get off there. He was the first car on pit road. He needed to be the first car off. That cost a lot. Brad, from 11th position on the racetrack, was the first to break out of line and head to pit road. We have a very split strategy here. We'll talk uh, more about who's where. Uh, on the restart in just a minute. First, let's show you why we're under caution for the first time in this race. Mike Bliss in the 19. We talked about how treacherous and tricky it is back there through that kink. You got to make sure you got room to come up. Bliss was running in 39th at the time, and he has taken that car to the garage. So Johnson passing Keselowski with that just momentary hiccup on the pit stop. Brad came in 11th. Jimmy came in 19th. So that exchange of track position there as we get set to go back racing. All these cars at the front of the field did not pit on this caution flag, including Kyle Busch has led all the laps so far. Kane get a great run trying to go for the lead now. Not quite there. He hangs on, Kyle Busch does. 16 cars did not pit under this first caution of the race. Now these guys who did pit, some of them with faster cars like Keselowski and Johnson and so on, are way back in the traffic. Yeah, this is a risky part we're talking about. This track still about a groove and a half wide, not a really good outside lane. Pretty hard making these passes. You see, Brad had now gone in front of Jimmy. Jimmy restarted on the outside, Brad on the inside. That was probably the only good thing that happened for Keselowski in that exchange. Three wide now down the front straightaway. Now you're going to get a two for one on this one. Montoya and Ambrose. Yo, that's close. Yeah, you got a watch race around that 42 now. He's pretty aggressive. Now Jimmy Johnson to try and find a way through. Denny Hamlin, Casey Kane, second place, 11 and 5. So those that did not hit under the caution, Kyle Busch, Casey Kane, Denny Hamlin, Paul Menard, Eric Alvarola, Kurt Busch, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Mark Martin, Regan Smith, Matt Kenseth, Flint Boyer, Jamie McMurray, Landon Castle, and David Reagan. Those are the guys that stayed on the track. Everybody else came down pit road.
Jimmy Johnson still having trouble moving up through the pack. Hasn't really been able to make the pass. Uh, that move that Keselowski made off of four to get by uh, Ambrose and Montoya at the same time really paid big, big benefits right there. But uh, looks like Jimmy might be getting a little frustrated, Dave. Well, they're not too frustrated, DJ. Interesting thing is, though, where Jimmy normally runs up front, he has a lot of time to think about what his car is doing and talk to his crew about it. But where he was running today in the quick decision check and now said to May led to this. Uh, the comfort was coming to me, though, in the center. Stop. 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 We're pitting. We're pitting. I didn't mean to yell at you, but anyway. So let's get ready here. You're in good shape, buddy. We, uh, like I was saying, running good lap times. Leaders are blazing fast. That 18 and 11. I don't know that we're going to have any for them, but I think we can definitely get up there and battle for third. Jimmy keeping his cool. Little or had to be interrupted by the crew chief so that they could make that split second decision. Yeah, sometimes that is frustrating. You, you know you've got to get on that radio, and there, that when somebody else is on there, it's frustrating because you've got to make that call quickly to get to pit road. Well, I'm sure Jimmy probably wasn't really planning on pitting. That uh, kind of probably surprised him that that early on that they were thinking about doing that. But uh, looks like it could be a good strategy move for later on. So Jimmy we're back running in the 20th position. He restarted 22nd. Uh, I'm sorry, he restarted 20th. He's still running 20th. Brad Kozlowski restarted 22nd, and Brad has moved up to 16th position. Now make it 15th as he passes Jamie McMurray. All this going on well behind <laughs> the man who won every practice, said one qualify, and is trying to win the race. Kyle Busch has led all the laps so far in the 18th. Prettiest setting in sports, Phoenix International Raceway with the AdvoCare 500 underway. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Kyle Busch has led all of the laps so far as we check out which driver you think will take first out of this week's top four qualifiers. Kyle, we know it won't be Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin or Casey Kane. Text FAST to 34763 or go to ATTFastestDriver.com to play. You could have a chance to win four Gs by playing along in today's AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Every week you have a chance to make your pick and see where you stack up against the rest. You even have a, an advantage before you make your picks this week because you can eliminate <laughs> one of the three pretty quickly. Truex Jr. back in the garage area after starting second today. Early engine troubles with the 56. Looks like Keselowski is able to make some passes here with these fresher tires. Mason Matt Kenseth here for the 12th position. What this will do for the two team is if this thing goes green all the way to the finish or to the to the end of these uh, leaders fuel tanks, they'll have to pit for fuel. He'll be able to stay out and lead a lap and uh, get a bonus point. Not only that, but have some time in there too that uh, he could put some cars laps down and things like that if the caution should fly during that time. But he's really doing a nice job right now. He's got a really good race car. You see him cut under Newman like that? Wow. And up to the 11th spot for Keselowski. Of course, last week in the race in Texas, we saw a little, little pickup on pit road that they had to work to recover from. He locked up the front brakes uh, coming in his pit stall. You see how deep he stayed. Then Danica Patrick came in her pit stall, and he had to back up to get around her. Cost the number of spots, and then today, another little pickup. All that exiting the pit lane lost a couple of spots. Not a lot, but a couple of spots in that momentary hesitation. He sure has charged forward, though, since the restart. Yeah, he's passed 11 cars since the restart. We're talking about how hard it is to pass here, but he's not having much trouble at all. Mark Martin just ahead of him in the 55. To borrow a phrase from the man that used to drive this two-car Vince, Brad Kozlowski's flat flying. <laughs> he is indeed, and Paul Wolf told me that this morning before the race they were a little concerned about the car being a little too tight in the center of the turns. That's what they've been fighting all weekend, and Brad said on that first run they were tight, but Paul Wolf made a light, slight air pressure adjustment on those left side tires. Car has really come to life, and BK is moving. Another one there. And a very good start to the day for Keselowski in the deuce. Bench of the man that started second back in the garage. Jamie has an update on Martin Truex Jr. 
Yes, Alan, he crawled out of his car. I had a word with him. He told me it basically just blew up on the second lap. He said it just started, the engine started to eat itself in his words. As you can see on the right side, they continue looking at it and diagnosing. Unfortunately for Martin, this is his second DNF this year, Alan. Disappointing. He had high hopes for this race. Yeah, that's the disappointing thing is it really is uh, disappointing because he really felt like this was going to be his best chance to win a race in the chase. Jimmy Johnson after 15th place on Joey Logano. Let my man take care of yourself whenever you get an opportunity. No pressure, I'll back. Nice shot. Get a deep breath. Nice and smooth. Walk the lap, sir. 2742. Solid lap, man. On five times. Yeah, Jimmy looked like maybe out there to that restart, besides being a little bit careful, his car might have been a little bit on the free side to start with. He's kind of took it easy, but really looks like this car is handling well now, Dave. And DJ, when I asked Chad Knauss about yesterday's practice, how much were they fine-tuning and how much were they searching? And he said, we were playing around quite a bit, but we were trying things that we didn't know about. We knew a lot of things about this track, even in just in two races, and it's the depth of their notebook which makes this team so good. So, in addition to what they knew would work here, they've got other things they practiced, and right now they have improved that 48 car. And you see Jimmy moving up. And trying to work his way toward the front after starting pretty deep in the pack in this race in 24th position. A couple of fast Toyotas at the head of the field. Both of them out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Stables. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin running one and two at Phoenix. What a beautiful setting for a racetrack. Phoenix International Raceway in the Desert Mountains southwest of downtown. And a look from our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Spectacular Sunday afternoon here in the Valley of the Sun. And Monday night, a spectacular night of football on ESPN. First at 6.30, Monday night countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, Jamal Charles continues his comeback season as he and the Chiefs face off against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Monday night football, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. And trouble off of turn four has brought the yellow flag out again. I tell you, this thing's narrowed up. David Gilliland running as the last car on the lead lap in 34th position when that happened. Uh-oh. Oh, right front. Ah, man, that oh, that's hard. a bad feeling. Nothing you can do as a driver. Hang on and... Wow. Just Feel fortunate you have that safer barrier out there this day and time. Takes a little away from the driver, but a really hard hit there. And we'll probably see some issues. A lot of braking goes on at this racetrack, so if you're on them too much, you can melt the bead in that right front tire. I said, uh-oh, because when we came up on that replay and I saw where he was on the track, you knew what was coming. Yeah. And that wasn't going to be pretty. Fortunately, David's driven the car back around. Pit road is open. And let's see what the strategy split is here. Dave, looks like most of them are coming in. Chad asked Jimmy what he wanted to do. Jimmy put it back to Chad. They're going to go conservative, take on four tires. Jimmy's car a little free into turn, actually tight into turn four, free into turn one. They'll fill it with Sunoco fuel. Jamie. And Denny Hamlin, race winner from the spring here, said he's tight rolling the center. Four tires, chassis adjustment. You see the wrench in the back window there. The two-car Brad Keselowski, they discussed the possibility of staying out and as compared to going with two tires or four. Paul Wolf made the call. Four tires for Brad Keselowski. No changes, Doc. Kyle Busch led all 53 laps thus far. So a little bit tight in the middle. Otherwise, the car really, really good. Four tires pumping off of Snowfield Field. He is out of the way, but Mark Martin will beat him off of pit road. Look at that rush to the end of pit road. And a little strategy being played up at the front of the pack. Mark Martin goes to the lead, up 10 spots after just a two-tire change on the double five. It's beautiful country, the desert southwest surrounding Phoenix, Arizona. 
And a look at the Milo's Race Tracker, helping us remember the great history of NASCAR racing here at Phoenix. It was 1964. They laid out this mile oval, and they started racing open wheel cars. A.J. Foyt, the first winner. Some pretty good history. And the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, joining the Speedway's roster of events in 1998. And who will ever forget, Alan Kowicki, winning that first event, his first Sprint Cup win and spinning around the other way and doing what he himself labeled the Polish victory lap. What a great scene it was that day here in Phoenix. Certainly was, no doubt about that. Looking for another great scene today on a beautiful afternoon. I say 98, I meant 88. As you look at the cleanup continuing here at Phoenix after the second caution of the race brought out when David Gilliland uh, dropped the right front and pounded the wall off of turn number four. Travis Quapple is the leader. David Reagan is second. They've not stopped under this caution. Mark Martin first off the pit lane. He's running third. Martin, Montoya, Jeff Burton, Kevin Harvick, and Carl Edwards taking just right side tires and uh, gaining some track position there. Brad Kozlowski's team debated to just take rights or get all four just before pitting. We don't even have uh, 50 green on the right. Most in front of us will, just because of the fuel situation. Yeah, it's four, but my car's still good here. I hate to take any chances with putting two on and getting run over or blowing something out. All right, 10-4. four. We're just giving you the options we got. Understood. Yeah, I mean that's just good, uh, good sound decision. It's nice having somebody that uh, like Keselowski in there, helping him with this decision a little bit. He's, he knows how hard he's been running the car. Let's talk a little strategy from the other side of the championship, Dave. Chad Canales has his driver running 19th right now. Chad, how do you rate the progress so far? I think pretty good. I think we're running pretty well. I think we could definitely be faster to get up with some of those Toyotas, but I think Lowe Chevrolet is running really well today. Long ways to go. You talked about two tenths faster. Can you adjust that in or does he need to adjust his mind? I have no idea what you just said, but get ready to go green. I think we're going to get a good day out of this. It's important letting them get back to business here because Chad sits down here in his pit stall. He calls the green for him today, guys. 48 car pitting on the turn four end of the pit lane today. Yeah, most of the time the spotter will call the green flag, but here the spotters are down in the middle of one and two. And they can't really see the green flag that well. And with their pit stall right there on the front straightaway, Chad's got a good view. Yeah, and Andy, I'm going to bring up a point you just made, that 48 where he's pitting. That's going to give the two somewhat of an advantage. They're going to know everything that 48 is doing before they ever get to their pit stall. So if they get the two, that probably will uh, determine sometimes as to what they may do. Yeah, that is an advantage because he'll already know. Paul Wolf will know what they're doing. Um, plenty of time to change his strategy. Quapple and Reagan have pitted late in the caution. Mark Martin with the two-tire call from 11th to 1st on the pit stop. David Stremme, the free pass. And we go racing once again. back to the front. Situation when Keselowski has such a good race car and he wants to make some ground up. You see he was stuck on the outside there. Have to be careful not to overdrive, especially in the three. Did a great job of taking that spot away from court. Casey Kane, Kurt Busch, 5 and 78. Kane slides through, picks up a spot. That's ninth place. There's Kevin Harvick and Ara Galmarola, 29 and 43. Now, Harvick got two tires on that last stop, uh, trying to get them some track position, see what they really may have in this race car today. Al Rolo, once again, doing a very nice job. Yeah, tremendous. Hey, Gordon really working on the back bumper of Keselowski now, trying to get, get the spot. He gets it. Yeah, I don't know if Brad slipped going into that corner, but uh, sure allowed Gordon to get on his bumper. 
Philip, one up wide in front of Keselowski. It's Montoya in the 42, kept it off the wall. As a championship contender, you can see all of those things happening, just wondering what may happen. Will it get it back under control before you get there? It's that pins and needles thing we were talking about Absolutely. earlier. Absolutely. See your whole championship and your whole year's effort disappear with that car sliding back across the racetrack in front of you if he spins. So Kyle Busch has led all but six laps of this race. Mark Martin is second, Denny Hamlin third, Paul Menard fourth, Jeff Burton runs fifth. Rest of the top ten, Al Marola, Harvick, Kane, Montoya, and Kurt Busch. And the championship top two, top three actually, nose to tail. Yeah, Jimmy's done a nice job charging up through this time. I think this car's better on this restart than what it has been in the past. That has to be encouraging that he was able to pass some cars and get up and see this two car. Johnson's picked up five positions since the restart. And Keselowski going to go back to work on the inside of this Jeff Gordon machine, Vince. One of the concerns for Brad Keselowski prior to that most recent pit stop is he said he felt like he was driving a little bit too much on the right front. Everybody being very cautious about the wear on the right front. And they talked about maybe two tires on that stop. And Brad said, I think we ought to go four because I'm concerned about the wear and the heaviness on that right front tire. I talked with Paul Wolf, the crew chief, as he looked at those tires. He said the right front looked good, and they reassured Brad of that as well. Little moment there in the corner. Ooh, yeah. Most definitely. A little stack up right there. Looks like Jimmy was uh, got the worst of that. Had to jump out of the gas to keep from running into the two. When the two jumped out of the gas, it looked like. Yeah, he was working on Jeff Gordon, and it uh, looked like Jeff kind of got held up a little bit by the 42, and it kind of just stacked up, and then Jimmy was the one that had to basically yield. Lap, uh, two laps ago now, the view from Clint Boyer at that little accordion effect. Pressure out back, the bottle nicking on him. Yeah, door kind of opened nicely for Clint Boyer there to take that spot away from Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy had to kind of swerve to the right to avoid from running over the two car. Like Brad had to take uh, Montoya on the outside. Casey Kane picking up a spot. Five car moving ahead of Kevin Harvick. Seventh place. Came the defending winner of this race. So Kyle Busch has put a pretty good gap on Mark Martin, the second place car. There's the gap, first to second, Denny Hamlin, Paul Menard running third and fourth. And a tremendous story running in fifth position. Jeff Burton, to borrow a line from one of our colleagues, had to go to the back of the field for going back to his original race car for the weekend, Jamie, but they've played a little strategy and gotten it up into the top five. Yes, they have, and what a weekend it has been. First practice on Friday, he put it in the wall. They brought out the backup car. Yesterday morning in practice, he put it in the wall. They had to repair the primary. That's the car you see on the screen there, the number 31. Started in the back today, took four tires on the first stop, and the last stop took left sides only. He's driving his way up there, Alan. Very impressive run for Jeff Burton. It's been quite yeah. a week. I mean, if you go back to the primary, shouldn't you have to go, you shouldn't have to, go to the front of the field? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's done so far. He did fifth. Everybody chasing Kyle Busch in this race. He's been dominant so far. We're back at Phoenix International Raceway. If you're just joining us, here's what's happened so far. Eyes on Brad Keselowski came in for a lap 18 pit stop, but stalled it. Came in 11th, went back out 23rd, but Rusty made up a lot of ground on the track. He's very fast. He did, Nicole. He's made up a lot of ground, but he did make a mistake, and they got to stop making these mistakes if they're going to win this championship. But he is all the way back up to 11th right now. He's got a really fast car. Jimmy Johnson also started this day a little back in the field, started 24th, but he's currently
early in 13. Yeah, showed a lot of patience and also had a great pitch stop, took advantage of the opportunity, took advantage of the mistake of Brad Keselowski, and now has got himself just outside of that top 10. Those two guys fighting for every position on the track because the championship, every point matters, they're only separated by seven. There is Brad Keselowski trying to get around the 29 of Kevin Harvick. Earlier in the day, we were talking a lot about the best of the rest in terms of, of the guys who aren't necessarily involved in the chase. I've got a good race going on right here. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer. Brad gets the best of him, advances his position, moves up into that 10th spot. Brad Keselowski has got, really got this car hooked up. Back to the best of the rest. We were talking about Kyle Busch. Came in here this weekend, one practice, was the fastest in qualifying, and he has led a whole lot of laps out there today. Yeah, he's had an incredible car. Set a new track record under 26 seconds in the 25-second bracket, and wow. that car has not. So that is a strong force. If that thing stays under him all day long, we're really going to see something. And it's not just Kyle Busch. Jenny Hamlin is in second. So both JGR cars uh, doing well. Joey Logano back in 14th as well. But how about Paul Menard in yeah. third? Paul Menard's doing an outstanding job. Richard Childress Racing announced or, or got the information yesterday or this weekend. Kevin Harvick's going to be moving on next year. This young man has been steady this season. They've struggled some with performance. But today he's having a really strong run, doing an outstanding job, Paul Menard. Perhaps it's no surprise that Mark Martin is running in the top five, but he's running fourth, and you say that car is gorgeous. Yeah, that car is an amazing car. I went down at the broad jury and talked to these guys about this car. This is a brand new Michael Walter design car of their low center of gravity car. They say this is the first car of this design, and it's just a beautiful race car. I looked under the hood and looked inside. Oh, my gosh. Looks like a show car. And they're really pumped up with Mark Martin. They like his leadership. They like what's going on down there. But I personally really like that car. And I personally would like to point out the driver who's in fifth right now, Ray. That's Eric Almarola. Yeah, this kid is, is really doing an amazing job. You know, give a little love out to the King's car and Sam Johns and that group over there have been moving things around. This car's been running up front week after week. We thought we were going to see him get his first win a couple weeks ago. I think if they keep doing what they're doing, Eric Almarola will go to victory lane. Yep. Back up front, Kyle Busch has a four and a half second lead, but perhaps a bit of trouble. Trash on the grill. We will update the status of that 18 car when we come back. 84 laps complete at Phoenix International Raceway. Kyle Busch in the 18 car out front. Through a quarter distance of today's Apple Care 500 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Phoenix. And we look down from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy to watch coverage live from Phoenix by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Like this one from Danica Patrick's car, looking back on race leader Kyle Busch. Danica last on the lead lap in 30th place. And Kyle with an unwanted passenger in the grill opening of that 18 car. A little trash on the grill there, Doc. They talking about any overheating or temperature? Well, Kyle's keeping an eye on the temperature gauges, but Dave Rogers, the crew chief, has told Kyle, hey, turn your fans off and get the tracks to come off. He did just turn the fans off, but all the trash did was drop down. It didn't come off the grill. So now what's happening is their spotter is talking to other cars, driver spotters, and saying we may want to use some people to get it off. He was going to use the 10 car, opted not to. Uh, he said if all else fails, what we may have to do is wait on the 11 car and use our teammate, Denny Hamlin. But right now, the temperatures are okay, but they're watching it very closely. Yeah, his teammates so almost uh, three seconds back. I think I will try to get with one of these lap cars. Yeah, he really missed a good opportunity there with the 10 car to just ride on the straightaway with that fan off and let that uh, let that piece of trash kind of fall off of there. Yeah, that looked like a pretty substantial piece that's on there, and it's almost like that it's been there so long it's kind of got embedded in that screen somewhat, and uh, could be difficult to get off. Kyle doesn't seem to be too concerned about it. He hasn't slowed him down. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Kyle Busch continuing to lead. Jeff Burton sliding back a bit. Was running fifth a little while ago. Now he's just given up 10th place to Kevin Harvick. 
course, Harvick. It was reported this weekend by ESPN's Marty Smith uh, that Harvick would be going to the Stuart Haas Racing Team for the 2014 NASCAR Sprint Cup season. Will be driving this 29 car for Richard Childress Racing in next season, 2013. Uh, all of the parties involved, from Tony Stewart to Richard Childress to Kevin Harvick, had no further comment on the story. And right now, Dave Harvick has... Uh, Trying to hang on to this track position. The team worked uh, a little strategy to help get. Yeah, they took two lefts the first time he stopped and then two rights the second time he stopped. But they really don't think of improved the speed much. He's lost position since the restart here. The car has been mostly difficult to turn, and they popped a spring rubber into the right rear spring the last time to try to correct that. It's good to see him having a, somewhat of a, a decent day here. And Kevin's really good here. You see Burton there running 11th. Got all three RCR cars in the top 11. We haven't had a chance to say that much this year. No. Clint Boyer right behind Jeff Burton. Clint running in 12th position. And Jimmy Johnson running in 13th position. We talked about Johnson and Kozlowski's relative positions on pit road. With Johnson at the turn four end of the pit lane. Now let's talk about another relative position. Most times at the racetrack, the spotters that are up on the roof to help the driver for both safety and uh, helping him clear other cars around are located in the middle of the front stretch. Here at Phoenix, they're on the grandstand down in the middle of turns one and two, and that can sometimes present some problems like this. Earl, do you have a difficulty clearing him here? Let's say off of turn four to the start finish line. Yeah, he's coming right at me, so I'm just trying to be sure. Okay, let's do this. If it's a situation like on a restart or when it's tight like that, I'll take it off of turn four to the start-finish line because we had a couple opportunities there where we could have gotten down and been clear. I'll tell you, you're going to have to be careful with that, though. I, I've actually I've spotted from the roof here before, and I've also been on pit road. And I know that on pit road, it, sometimes it's frustrating when you see a, an opportunity miss that you could have maybe slid in a hole, but it's hard to be down low and try to call a car clear anywhere on this racetrack, and I just, I'd be careful doing that. So keep an eye on that for uh, action after the next restart with Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss and the spotter Earl Barbin. Now it looks like Kyle Busch has managed to clear a good bit of that trash from the grill of the 18 car as he runs in traffic. Yeah, that looks like something that's more manageable. Uh, you can see he gets right up behind. There but, yeah, there yeah. a lot of it went. So should be in good shape from this point on. He's been in good shape all race so yeah, far. Yeah, I'd say. A little trash on the grills, but about the only thing that's caused any concern for the 18. 95 of 101 laps led by the Las Vegas native, Kyle Busch. After last year's tiebreaker necessary championship in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski have really stepped it up in the 2012 version of the chase. Trading blows back and forth. We've used the phrase a couple of times like a heavyweight boxing match going toe to toe. And it looks like they're setting up to do it again today here in round nine of the chase in Phoenix. Keselowski has moved up to the seventh position in this race. Johnson following him up through the pack. Jimmy running in 13th. We check in on both teams. Welcome to the single digits. Spurts two back. Let's go get the 24. You guys are moving forward here. Got some open air here. Nice and smooth. We'll move forward. Joey Meyer talking to his driver, Brad Kozlowski, who continues to move forward. Jimmy Johnson also slicing his way up through some of the traffic. Trying to get 12th position from Jeff Burton. Remember, Jimmy started way back in 24th place. Hey, talk about the intensity, and it's just, you know, what makes it so intense is just how hard you've had to run in this chase, and, and no one that if you don't finish somewhere right around the top five, you're going to lose a significant amount of points. And Andy, you were, you were talking earlier in the weekend about just how intense the championship seems to be this year. Yeah, it does. It seems like it, the last couple of years, it's just been, you have to really step it up to be a champion now because people like Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski, what they're doing is just heroic. We saw the same thing last year with Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards. There's Jeff Burton, Jamie. He said he was feeling a vibration. They said they were pretty close to getting ready to pit anyway, so they brought, a, brought him down pit road, and he said, I need a tear-off. I cannot see out of the windshield. They're starting to get a lot of glare with the sun going down, guys. 
Yeah, and that's only going to get worse as this day goes on, uh, especially that glare down into turn one as the sun starts to set here. Uh, th these drivers will face something that, that makes it very difficult at this racetrack as they enter that turn one, literally getting to where they can't see the cars that are in front of them at times. At one point in this run, Kyle Busch had a three and a half second lead over Denny Hamlin. Now it's point three five seconds between the 18 and the 11. Yeah, Denny Hamlin not having any problem seeing the leader now. Yeah, got him right where he wants him. Yeah, seeing the, uh, the other couple of runs that we've had, Denny's car looks to be a little bit better in that longer run, and he's really able to maneuver around traffic better than what Kyle has been able to. I think Kyle got distracted a little bit with that crash on the grill, lost some of his lead there, but I do believe that Hamlin has a little better car at this point. Of course, Denny, the most recent NASCAR Sprint Cup Series winner here at Phoenix International Raceway, took the race back on March the 4th, running the final 84 laps on fuel. Remember that number, he did stretch it, might come into play later. As we check out our mobile one telemetry, 162 miles an hour into that hard left turn one. Yeah, and you see how much slower they're going in the middle of the corner, down almost 100 miles an hour, and that's where that heat comes from. You have to use a lot of brake, get in the corner, and that heat kind of takes its toll on that D to that right front tire. You saw a caution come out earlier just for that. Pretty good hot rod, this 11 car today, Jamie, running second and closing. Absolutely. He's actually been on both ends of the spectrum. Early on, he was too tight, so they went up on the track bar. Now he's saying he's too free to be comfortable. But keep in mind, crew chief Darian Grubbs said, even though we won here in the spring, today we expect to be better. This car is better. He might be uncomfortable as far as the feeling of it, but it's uh, pretty fast, and I'm sure he's probably going to adapt to that somewhat. They might make a slight adjustment. I don't think they can make too much of this. Well, what I'm seeing, I'd make a little more uncomfortable. <laughs> Hamlin trying to track down Kyle Busch and pass him for the lead, something no one's done under green yet today. And green flag pit stops coming if we don't see the yellow flag in about the next five to seven laps. Racing and football. They aren't so different. The driver's the quarterback, the crew chief, the coach, in the spotlight, for better or worse. But the pit crew, those are the linemen. Bloody knees and sore Monday mornings. They don't work for attention. They work for wins. All for one, one for all. So grab a wrench and get over the wall. Well, those linemen are getting set to go to work as green flag pit stops get underway here at Phoenix International Raceway with a new leader out in front of the field. Denny Hamlin has gone around Kyle Busch a few laps ago and has gone to the number one spot. You can see Kyle had been struggling a little bit. Denny had been trying to set him up. Makes a run here. Through the center of the corner. This is where Denny Hamlin's car is really, really the better car right now. It's through the center and on the exit of the corner. Carries a lot of speed down the straightaway. Kyle's actually falling back to fourth right now. Fifth now. His brother passed him. Yeah, Kyle really slowing down at the end of this long green flag run. All the leaders pitted at lap 53. We've been green since. And now beginning to see some trickle onto the pit lane. We've seen Kevin Harvick, Bobby Labonte, Juan Pablo Montoya, Mark Martin, Dave Blaney. On to the pit lane, and now from second place, Paul Menard's in. His team saw a good open when they finished happy hour with a final lap time of 27.27 seconds. This car right now, they said, leave it alone. It's that good for Paul Menard. Four tires. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 saying, really tight center. He needs some help to get this car better. Four tires was the call. Jamie McMurray, Carl Edwards also on the pit lane. Under the green flag. There's Carl, Jamie. And Carl Edwards wants some help on his car. He said, we're a half second slower than we were in practice. They're going to try four tires here as they work on the left-hand side to better this 99. Great run for Kurt Busch today. Top five before they all started pitting. They'll pit for four tires, a track bar, an air pressure adjustment. Kurt saying the car won't turn in the center of the corner, and off of the corner is just a little bit loose. Here's the 16 of Greg Biffle. This is a car that was wrecked earlier in the weekend. The team repaired it, did not have to go to a backup. He's fighting the fact that he just doesn't feel like he has any grips as he's doing all he can. Four tires and air pressure adjustment for the 16 of Greg Biffle. 
Dave. Top 10 run for Eric Almirola. Takes a temporary pause to come on to pit lane. They took on four tires, gave him a track bar adjustment for a car that was loose in tight from the center off the corner. And there's Kyle Busch, who has led so much of this race and fallen back a good number of positions late in this long green flag run, coming in for what's a much needed pit stop. And now look, what Kyle said was that the car doesn't feel any difference. It maybe it's just a, a bit snug, but that's the only difference he felt when the, the 11 car went by. They made the call, four tires, no changes, coupling up with snow so fuel, and he's away for a scheduled stop. And Denny Hamlin now from the lead will head down onto the pit lane. 45 miles an hour, the pit road speed limit today. That's Marco Sambros who just slid into his box ahead of Denny. And Hamlin works to the attention of the Joe Gibbs Racing Team, Jamie. Well, I reported how he was feeling uncomfortable. Funny how when you take the lead, all of a sudden the car is fine. No more issues anymore. The call is four tires. They'll fill him up with fuel. Jeff Gordon making his way down as they continue to work on Denny Hamlin. Solid stop for him. Jeff Gordon's car has been pretty good. Chassis adjustment. You saw it there. Four tires once again for the 24. Notice up the top of the screen there, Jamie. Brad Keselowski, leader. Staying on the racetrack longer than everyone else. One bonus point toward the championship for leading a lap for Brad Keselowski. Jimmy Johnson has yet to lead today. There's Matt Kenseth, Dave. He had been running 17th, Allen complaining that his car got tighter the longer he ran. They will make a chassis and an air pressure adjustment for him as they change four tires and fill up full of Sunoco fuel. Vince? The 39 of Ryan Newman is in using a new right front, uh, new front tire changer today. That's Mark Armstrong, their normal tire changer out with an injury. Car just a little bit too tight. It starts off good, but gets too tight late in the run. They make a chassis adjustment and four tire change for Ryan Newman. So fascinating here, not yet hitting on this cycle of stops. Brad Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson running one and two. Can the 48 outlast the two and get that bonus point evened up? Well, if I was Paul Wolf, I'd, may, I'd see just how long that he could run out there and not pit, come down pit road and give Jimmy Johnson that point. Pitting. We're going to be pitting here. Clint Boyer's in, Dave. Think about your entrance all the way around the corner. Porter described his car as plowing. He will get an adjustment for that and for fresh tires. As you see Keselowski now making his way down pit road. Vince. The two of Brad Keselowski he says he's been fighting a little bit of tight in the center and some rollover on the right rear. They've talked about putting around in the right rear or maybe a track bar adjustment. But Keselowski said that when the car got into clean air, it felt a lot better. So they may have had a little discussion between driver and crew chief about what kind of changes they might want to make. Brad says if you do anything with the chassis, make it very minor. At this point, no chassis adjustments, four tire change, Sunoco fuel for the two of Brad Keselowski. Now, Jimmy Johnson has not yet officially led a lap. Here he is on pit road, Dave. They were trying to do it, but the only guy in their way, that two car. Jimmy complaining this time that he needs more grip under power. The car felt a little bit the same as it was last time. You see the wrench in the rear. He'll get a wedge adjustment on the left side. Four fresh tires for Johnson. And he is not going to lead a lap on this cycle of pit stops. Denny Hamlin has gone by on the track and reassume the race lead. Talked about a seven point difference starting the day between Keselowski and Johnson. Four of those were bonus points for winning races, leading laps and leading the most laps. Put one in the two quarter today. Put the 11 in the number one spot on the scoreboard. Ed. What a spectacular afternoon in the Valley of the Sun for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series AdvoCare 500. Race fans, check out NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy to watch coverage from today's Phoenix race live by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Just two cautions in the race so far. Kyle Busch has been dominant, but late in a long green flag run. Denny Hamlin shot by him, and after an exchange of pit stops, Hamlin has a 1.2 second lead over Paul Menard with Kyle Busch in third, 2.7 seconds behind. Other stories on the day. Mark Truex Jr. went to the garage early after starting second with an engine problem. And the top two in the championship after starting 14th and 24th have moved their way up. 
Brad Kozlowski running in fourth position and Jimmy Johnson running in ninth position with still more than half the race to go. So in that cycle of pit stops, we saw both Kozlowski and Johnson stay out longer trying to lead a lap after the guys in front of them pitted to get a bonus point toward the championship. Kozlowski was able to do so and at the same time keep Johnson from doing so. That Jimmy's fuel mileage range. Yeah, but Brad had an eight second lead on Jimmy Johnson. That's why he was able to do that. And you see Brad crossing the start finish line here on pit road, but Jimmy Johnson has not got there in time yet. So that's uh, having that big lead. And here's the other key. You, you think, well, Jimmy may lead it the next step when he comes back, but he's pitting short of the start finish line. He's actually over in this section. He cannot get to the start finish line before the cycle finishes with I believe it was Denny Hamlin leading yep. at the time. Denny Hamlin came by on the racetrack while Jimmy was making his pit stop. So one bonus point for Kozlowski today. Johnson still to even that tally. Also make mention that Kurt Busch made two pit stops in that cycle. And has fallen from fourth position back to 26th. Yeah, apparently ran over something maybe going back out of the pits and had to come back in and maybe at a right rear. Uh, flat and uh, very unfortunate had a great run going but now it's a lap down uh, let's get more on that 78 Dave team just told me guys that they had a loose right front wheel so all that quick work on pit lane sometimes leaves things a little amiss and that was the case Kurt had to come back down pit road because he felt that vibration in the right front so there Kurt falling from fourth position all the way back, a lap down into 26th place. A lot of race to go, though. Try and get that free pass and get back in the mix. Kurt is one, two, three, four. He's the fifth car, one lap down at this point. So, Kyle Busch dominated the first third of the race. Long run, short run. Difference between Denny Hamlin's car and Busch's allowed Hamlin to go by just before the cycle of pit stops. And now it is the March race winner here, Denny Hamlin, who's in command. If you like that numerology thing, maybe it's the 11th day. It is 11-11 after all. Yeah, I kind of like him here, whatever day it may be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Denny does such a really good job in this type of racetrack. Where we talk about a lot of braking, Denny is really good at modulating the braking and, and not overusing that, which builds up air pressure in the front tires and, and getting his car out of shape, letting the, the chassis work. And he's so good with the throttle, and that's why he excels at these type of places. And of course, the flatter oval tracks are what Danny Hamlin learned his stock car racing on South Boston Virginia and Southside Speedway in Richmond and so on and in his Sprint Cup career we've seen him excel at places like Phoenix and Richmond and New Hampshire and Martinsville where that throttle modulation is so critical yeah, it really is we've seen him not we we've seen that from the very beginning and, and we've started to see this year in particular where the mile and a half and, and two mile racetrack he started to excel there too so he's getting the whole package put together uh, as a driver who will has contended for championship doesn't have that yet but really not the driver's fault uh, it's been mechanical issues that this kept this team from being right there and challenging it was March 4th, 2012, second race of this season. Denny Hamlin got the lead on a late restart, stretched his fuel the final 84 laps, and scored his first win of this season. Coverage of Monday Night Football continues on ESPN. First at 6.30, Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, Jamal Charles continues his comeback season as he and the Chiefs face off against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Monday Night Football, Kansas City and Pittsburgh, tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. He say a lot of good things about the Chiefs, but their kicker's been outstanding. He's from Hickory High School in Hickory, North Carolina. Really? Uh, Brian take, Suckup does I, a great job. I take oh. it you're familiar with him also yes. being from Hickory, North Carolina? Well, uh, he's been awesome. Denny Hamlin has been pretty tremendous in this middle section of the races. We're just across halfway today here at Phoenix International Raceway. Let's go up to speed, check in on some of the front runners and their progress on the day. We start with Denny Hamlin and Jamie Little. Well, and you mentioned that numerology deal, the 11 car racing on 11 11. Well, the team told me it would be huge to win today on this date because it is Veterans Day and FedEx employs many veterans throughout the country. They want nothing more than to thank them in victory lane. Right now, the car a little tight, Dave. 
I told you about Paul Menard's crew and their good omen of a 27-27. Well, how about the tire test done here at Phoenix International Raceway for Goodyear the Tuesday and Wednesday after Kansas? Crew Chief Slugger Labby told me they learned a lot on the 2013 car that they applied to this car in the shock and spring package area. Doc? Back in third, Kyle Busch trying to make a statement this weekend. He was the fastest car in all three practice sections, won the pole, and led all but six of the first 100 laps. Then the car got tight. That's when the team made it the 11 car, then he handled went by. Last pit stop, it took a rubber out of the left rear, and now Kyle said, wow, this car rolling much better. Vince. The two-car of Brad Keselowski, he has lost 14 points in the last two weeks. He went from seven points in the lead over Jimmy Johnson to seven points behind coming into this race. They know they couldn't afford to lose any more points today, and so far Keselowski is taking care of business. Car a little dirt, a little loose in the dirty air going into one. That's their only issue. Jamie? Behind him, the 24, and Jeff Gordon started this race 11th. This is the first time he's been in the top five today. Definitely been making progress on the changes. Jeff right now saying on the radio, a little bit loose under braking. Vince? The five of Casey Kane coming off that disappointing 25th place finish last week at Texas. Still had outside chances of maybe getting in the mix for the championship prior to that disappointing day. It's been much better today. Although Kane says it's a little bit too tight for his liking. Otherwise, pretty solid, Dave. Kevin Harvick qualified 19th of the day. I asked his crew chief, Gil Martin, if he had a top 10 car. He said, well, one thing I know for sure, I've always got a top 10 driver, and they continue to run in that position. Behind him, the 43 of Eric Almarola. His car is running so well today. He'd like another top five finish like he got a couple of weeks ago at Martinsville, matching his career best. As for the championship leader starting the day, 48th of Jimmy Johnson, they've made his car better. The ninth position that he runs in is better than the 12th he was running in before everyone started hitting last time. And as for Clint Boyer, our in-race reporter today, the car was actually loose on the first run. They've got to get some of that back because right now the 15 car continues not to turn for its driver. Alan? Dave, thanks. So there's an update on the top 10 as they've run a little bit past halfway today here at Phoenix. And that as they run championship standing, you <laughs> can't get much closer. Johnson and Kozlowski separated by a point. That'll change here as Jimmy gets by Eric Almarola to pick up a spot. Denny Hamlin is the leader in chase race number nine from Phoenix as we go NASCAR nonstop from ESPN. Pit stops happening at the Phoenix International Raceway. Championship leader Jimmy Johnson is going to give up eighth position for a four-tire 
stop and a chassis adjustment. Jimmy complaining his car is a little bit edgy to the center. They want to tighten it up just a little bit. Jamie? Denny Hamlin pits from the lead, saying a little bit too tight now, but closer to how they want to be with left sides only, Vince. Brad Keselowski, upper right-hand side of your screen. It's a little loose going into one. That's the only issue he has. They're going to make a slight air pressure adjustment for tires, Doc. Left side tires for Kyle Busch, and he beats Denny Hamlin off of pit road. Kyle the car much better with that rubber now out of the left rear. Got to be another strategy session here. The championship top two taking four tires. You see plenty of others choosing to change just two of them. Interesting, just the left side tire change also for Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Yeah, I think we saw some of that in practice where the left side tires actually grain up after a long run. That's probably what happened with Kyle Busch when he lost the lead earlier, and I'm sure that's what they saw. Decided to take, when they're going to take two, they'll take lifts. And you saw the caution come out in NASCAR nonstop. Debris reported high in turn number four. The reason for the third yellow of today's race. Work on the caution flag at Phoenix International Raceway in the ninth race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. A chase that's come down to essentially two drivers. The five-time champ, Jimmy Johnson, and Brad Keselowski trying to win Roger Penske, his first championship. There have been some small hiccups along the way. Two cars stalling, leaving pit road earlier today. Jimmy Johnson starting back in 24th position, but they both raced their way up into the top 10 in this race and continue their toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest for the NASCAR Sprint Cup title that figures to go down to the late laps at Homestead Miami Speedway next Sunday afternoon. Let's take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Jimmy Johnson's team with the fastest four-tire pit stop so far today, and that is a pretty fast stop. As a driver, you love that. And the fastest speed today... Turned by Brad Keselowski at a little better than 134 miles an hour. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app. Only from Sprint. Get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. 
So, uh, things to catch up on as we double up for the restart. Ryan Newman did not pit. He's the race leader. He was 14th at the caution flag. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, just left side tires, line up second and third. The first with four tires is Brad Kozlowski. He's in eighth for the restart. Uh, check that. Uh, Paul Menard also with four. He's in seventh for the restart. And Jimmy Johnson is going to be back in 14th position. Wave arounds back to the lead lap. Include Jamie McMurray and Travis Quapple. Carl Edwards got the free pass. And I think I got it all. Good job. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Newman's got 38 laps more on his tires than the rest of them do. See what he can do. Jeff Gordon in some trouble there off turn number two. They're fanning out around him. I think Jimmy Johnson was right in the middle of that. Look at that scramble. Jimmy Johnson right in the thick of that while up front Kyle Busch goes by and into the race lead around Ryan Newman. Something happened to Jeff Gordon coming up off of turn number two a lap ago. I just saw cars going left and right around him on both sides. But he seems to be up to speed. He lost four spots in that little scramble. See, Kirk was there in that 78. He's racing hard. He's the first car lap down right now. Look at this. Kate, 300 cars, three wide. I believe that was a situation uh, Jeff kind of backing out a little bit there. But it almost like something happened to his car right at that moment. I was going to say he gave Jimmy a little bit of room, but it's almost like he lost power for a minute. Denny Hamlin, 11, working on Clint Boyer, 15. Boyer's going to get that spot. Brad Kozlowski trying to follow through. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these four tires work against the cars, these good cars like Hamlin that got just two, got two left sides. Boyer going by there, he knows his only chance to have a real shot at anything next week for a championship is to go up here and grab this win, Dave. And DJ, Brian Patty told me this morning he's been vacillating between do I try to keep third in the championship or just go for the wins as we see a guy going for the wins right now. The two car inside the 11 car. The 15 is going to try for wins. They took strategy that time. Just two tires for Clint. They were left side tires. That should loosen the 15 up. Real variety of strategies there from Ryan Newman not pitting under the caution to Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer getting left. Paul Menard just got rights. Others like Brad Kozlowski and Jimmy Johnson got four. Pretty good sampling to kind of figure out what's going to work, but I'm, I'm impressed with the 39 car of Newman actually still running close second with no time. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. It doesn't look like the 11, look, doesn't look like the twos agreeing with him right now. Vince Welch has Ryan Newman's pit today. And Ryan uh, communicating with uh, crew chief Matt Borland about staying out. He said, why do you have the advantage with less fuel? Then I was waiting for you to convince me as to why I have the advantage with less fuel. 10 for cars lighter, more aerodynamics up front. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those guys have worked together in the past, although they've uh, just kind of gotten together over the past couple of weeks as a new crew chief driver. But you hear they've got some good camaraderie there, and they're... Uh, trying to make the best of this situation right now, A.B. Yeah, it sounds fun. Yeah, you look for the positives, and that is true. I mean, the car, it seems like the tires don't really give up a lot of speed, but the car being lighter on fuel, that is worth a little bit. Trick is, of course, he's got all those many laps less fuel well, on yeah, board. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. Of course, that uh, paint scheme on Ryan Newman's car from Quicken Loans today, recognizing members of the military who are their customers, some 200 and 50 of them on board that desert camo paint scheme and ESPN is joining with the USO to give to the USO wish book sending gifts that will lift the spirits of our troops and their families team up with ESPN and the USO by going to www.uso.org ESPN 
There's uh, different things you can pick from there, like a family fun day, free phone cards, and you can send those to our troops and families. A way to let our heroes and their families know we support them as the very, very proud son of a 28-year member of our armed forces. Happy Veterans Day, and thank you so much to all who serve and have served. Jimmy Johnson. Working on Eric Almirola and Casey Kane. We're trying to drive his way back into the top 10 here. You can see right at the top of our page there that uh, virtual tie right now for that championship lead. They talked about pins and needles a couple times today. I'm just wondering what Rick, Rick Hendrick was thinking <laughs> when he saw three of his four cars going three wide into turn one with the championship contender Jimmy Johnson, the one on the outside. And he's probably hoping that the other two realized that was the, the championship leader coming into the day, that they understood the situation. And they all got away with it. They did that <laughs> time. I bet it wasn't pins and needles <laughs> Mr. H was seeing there. Somebody mentioned a Maalox moment earlier. <laughs> Kyle Busch, the leader. We go NASCAR nonstop from Phoenix. at Phoenix International Raceway where Kyle Busch continues to lead the field. He's been out front for more than 125 laps today. But our main focus in this five-hour energy rapid recap is our championship contenders. Brad Keselowski started 14th, currently in fifth. He has a better car today than Jimmy Johnson, at least so far. It sure does look that way, Nicole. He's been doing everything just right. A pretty good pit stops, a fast car, making good adjustments on his chassis. He's really in championship form right now. And some strategic moves on the pit stop. The way that Keselowski pitted and when he pitted kept the 48 from leaning a lap. Very every point that's counts. That's exactly right. We get down to Homestead just like last year. We saw that every point makes a difference. It shows that two team is always thinking, always on their game. Back out on the track as we watch Brad Keselowski working on Clint Boyer. Boyer still mathematically in this championship, by the way. Yeah, he is mathematically in, like you said. He's 32 points behind right now. Do we think he'll get it? Probably not. But Brad wants to get him, that's for sure. Wants to pick up another position and try to catch that 48 card. He's three points behind the 48 right now. Yeah. And Brad, 
Brad gets by him, but he, Brad's been keeping four tires on that car all day long. You see his car's been strong through the middle. He's been able to go through traffic. But I think as the, as the race winds down, we're going to see these guys using more different strategy. We've seen two tires, right sides, left side, four tires. I, can't, I don't believe that Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf are going to keep uh, four tires on that car all day long. If I'm a crew chief on top of the box, I'm really watching fuel mileage. We're getting close to making the money stop here. What tires do I want on my car and how important is track position? I think track position at the end of this race is going to override whether you want four tires or not. You can see the car just in front of Brad Kozlowski. That's the 29 of Kevin Harvick. We have to give some credit to Richard Childress Racing today. It's not just Harvick who's running strong. Paul Menard has also been out front as well. Yeah, he really is. Menard has just been, oh, Menard, Brad, uh, the 29. Yeah. I've been looking at him, but you've been looking at the 27. I've been watching Paul Menard. Yeah, Rusty, you're right. The 29's been very strong. They both run well, and Jeff Burton, who happens to be running 14th right now, has had a strong day. So great day for RCR in the news yesterday. Kevin Harvick leaving. What's going to happen with that Budweiser sponsorship? But right now, looks like RCR is marching back with some strong race cars. It's an impressive run, especially for Jeff Burton, considering how much he struggled in practice. He wrecked not just once, Two. but wrecked twice. They went back to the first car he wrecked, and he's racing it right now. And he tried to wreck it once and he tried to wreck it early. <laughs> So that is Jeff Burke back in the field, but out front, it's Kyle Busch in front of Ryan Newman. Doc? And Kyle Busch said this run, the car is, quote, wrecking loose, wrecking loose. Dave Rogers said, hey, buddy, you got to save those tires on this next stop. I would like the option to only change two again. And Kyle said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use all the tools I've got in here to tighten this car up but it may not be enough. So Ray and Rusty, what kind of tools is he talking about? Well, the doc, sometimes they've got fans, blowers. We've seen those guys operate in different switches. They can, you know, turn the right front blower off, let that right front tire build up a little bit of pressure. Sometimes the driver can take a different line, arc into the corner a little bit different. You know, you want to try and drive that thing to the tighter side on the right front rather than on the right rear, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the blowers are one thing you can definitely do, like you said, Ray, to try to build some air pressure back up in that right front, make that car a little tighter. And, yeah, I do like what you just said about changing the line on the racetrack to get your car handling better as a driver that's about all you could do you got a couple switches you can play with but moving that car around and finding a better line is the smartest thing to do do you guys see that brad kozlowski in the two around the 29 kozlowski now in third jimmy johnson in eighth we are 199 laps complete 113 to go let's go nascar non-stop more from phoenix
of the way through the Admiral Care 500 in Phoenix, the second to last race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season. And our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. A spectacular sun-splashed 65-degree afternoon in the Valley of the Sun, where, believe it or not, there are freeze warnings out for tonight. It was cool this morning. And the action's been pretty hot on the racetrack as Kyle Busch continues to lead this race. We check out the AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Kyle running up front, obviously the furthest forward of the fastest four qualifiers. Remember to text FAST to 34763 and play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge or visit attfastestdriver.com. You could have a chance to win four Gs just by playing. Let's check out uh, the status of our top 10 by going up to speed. Dr. Jerry Punch has the race leader, Kyle Busch. Kyle having a very good car most of the day, but a lot of discussion now about what's happening with the car and what needs to happen on the final pit stop. Let's listen in. It's like yesterday's nationwide race. You got to drive it like a DA in order to get it to go. Okay, j make it last, make it last, man. There's a chance to only take two tires on the next stop. And that next stop they're talking about could be around lap 243. And by calculations, that could be the last stop of the day. Guys, pass on the racetrack. The Blue Deuce going to the number two spot, Doc. Yeah, this is exactly what we saw in practice yesterday, that uh, this two car was really exceptional. What we saw it be able to run cars down, make passes, just extremely fast in the long run. And now it's getting time to win this thing. And they stayed on this strategy of putting four tires on every time they've come down pit road. And it seems to be paying off for them here in this long run. Now up to second. Chasing down Kyle Busch, who just got two the last time. Brad Kozlowski said after the Texas race last Sunday night that he felt he needed to probably win one of the two final races to win the championship. He's up to second right now as we continue with our up to speed, Vince. Well, in the two car of uh, Brad Kozlowski really likes it, says it's a little bit snug, but otherwise it's good. Kozlowski with a brand new race car this weekend, and Paul Wolf said it's just that next generation, that little bit of extra bell and whistle that we could put on it, the best car we could possibly bring. Dave? 29 of Kevin Harvick continues to actually now he's taking over the third position, I believe, Vince, at this point. There he is. A great run for him after a poor qualifying run. They took four tires two stops ago. They took two lefts last time. They'll be able to take two rights on the final stop. He's being asked to stretch it right now so they can make that final window. The 15 of Clint Boyer. The crew telling me it's a little bit better right now, but it's still just a little bit tight track position. The biggest issue right now for Clint. He can't get forward past that 29. Jamie? And Denny Hamlin behind him started this race third, led 46 laps today, but on the last stop took two tires for the first time, and it hasn't been good for him. He's been battling. He fell back to seven and has now worked his way back into the top five, Dave. And so what about the speed for Jimmy Johnson? When I talked to Shad Knauss this morning, he said that's the one thing we couldn't find any more of in practice. The balance was good. We made progress, but we were still looking for a little bit more speed. Running six, he's right now protecting that championship lead by a slim two points. Vince? The five car of Casey Kane, he won this race a year ago, has really been fighting a loose race car during this most recent run. Now he says the track is really changing the handling a lot. It's going to be a four-tire change next time he comes out, talking about air pressure adjustments to help Kane out as well. Jamie? And Jeff Gordon been running top ten all day long. On that last restart, remember, he was sluggish and lost four positions. He's slowly fighting his way back, made a wedge adjustment last time around, and that seems to be helping the car. They've been competitive all day. Dave? Paul Bernard took four tires the last time down pit road. Has lost a couple of positions since the restart. You saw that, and that's because the car will not turn in the center of the corner. The car behind him right now is going to try to put some uh, a pass on him as well. That would be Matt Kenseth next in the order. There he is talking to his crew chief, Jimmy Fenning, this morning. Jimmy said, man, did Joe Gibbs Racing hit a home run when they got this guy for next year. He thinks so highly of Matt, and even though they've won two times in this chase already, Jimmy says, I want another win with Matt before the year is out. Alan. Dave, thanks. So it's been a Kyle Busch day. Led the most laps in this race so far. A segment of the race where he fell back on a longer run, and Denny Hamlin was out in front. And what might have been Kyle Busch missing being involved in this championship by the heartbreaking night in Richmond in early September. 
and even in the two races in this chase where he hasn't had one of those top five finishes, he was running up front in New Hampshire when they had an engine problem. He was running well in Kansas when he got tangled up with another competitor and crashed. Well, they really have been outstanding. They've shown speed probably uh, as much as anyone else, even Brad and Jimmy, on, on a regular week-to-week -week basis, they've been right there. Yeah, but even if they had made the chase, they would still not be at the level of performance we've seen out of the two in the 48 in this chase. Kyle saying because of those two problems, they tracked it that they'd be about fifth or sixth in the championship had they made it. And not good enough to win the title, but perhaps launching some momentum for a bid in 2013. He's bidding for a win here in Phoenix today. He's out in front. About to hit the three-quarter mark of the semifinal race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Brad Keselowski running second. Jimmy Johnson is back in sixth. Only two races left in the chase. Two drivers with a shot at the cup and miles of opportunity. This moment will either define a career or elevate a legend. Nice shot. Get a deep breath. Nice and smooth. You know what they say about opportunity, right? That it's fleeting. Well, guess what? It's true. Well, after both drivers started well back in the pack, they both run up into the top ten. And I hate to use the phrase, but I'm going to use it, that old sports cliche, they're doing what they have to do in this second-to-last race of the season. As we look at how the day started, how they prepped for Phoenix, presented by Doomsday Preppers, with Brad Kozlowski seven points behind Jimmy Johnson, starting back in 14th position. Johnson starting back in 24th. Doomsday Preppers on National Geographic. They have moved up. Kozlowski to second and closing quickly on the race leader, Kyle Busch. That is that 18 out the front window. These four tires are really showing to make a big difference, along with a driver that is very motivated to take this uh, points lead right now by making this pass and going to the front. And there, you're right, Alan. They're, they're actually, both these teams are doing what they have to do. Keselowski obviously doing it. But Jimmy Johnson's car is good. He's made a lot of passes, and he's up there in the top, uh, top 10, so he's doing what he needs to do also. 
Big picture story on the day of the race. Kyle Busch has had a dominant car, but a couple of times when we've gotten into a long green flag run, at the end of that long run, his car has fallen off and faded. Well, he might just be fading enough to give up the lead right here. Well, one thing's happening now. You saw uh, Dale Jr. just pitted with 85 to go. Uh, they, if they want to split this up from the last time they pitted, they'd have to go about 72 laps in each segment to make it on one more stop. So we, we'll see if these cars can do it. What's the 48 uh, team doing here, Dave? And you saw the change in position on the left side of the screen there. Casey Kane going around the 48. He had actually given the position to Jimmy a few laps ago for Jimmy to see what he could do if he wasn't fighting with the five car. But Jimmy couldn't go anywhere. And Chad said on the radio, well, I guess we got to give that back. And they just did. All right. Yeah, I think that's kind of a tale of what's happening right now. We've got one here in Brad Keselowski moving forward, looking to win the race, and, and Jimmy struggling to, to keep a position there and not lose any more points than what he, he possibly can today, knowing that this two is so good. Keselowski's made up almost three seconds, or actually more than that, since uh, he got back out on the racetrack and he's now running down. I'm surprised that Kyle hadn't kind of let him go here. Kyle raced him hard. Not have had some history. I don't think Kyle's going to make it easy on him. Uh, whatever he's racing for, he's certainly not going to put either one of them in a bad position because they have, both have a chance to win here. Now they're coming up on some lap traffic. It's Bobby Labonte, 47. Danica Patrick, 10. Just ahead of his fight for the race lead. Kyle Busch hanging on to the lead, Doc. Yeah, car getting a little bit tight, Alan. He's been told, though, to save that right front tire. Carlson, I'm trying my darndest to save the right front so we can change two in that final stop. But once again, here's the challenge from Brad J. Big picture here. Boy, I'll be a good boy. <laughs> yeah, he will set lead pretty bad, but he's not going to take an un undue chance here to try to take it. He's going to take it when the opportunity is there. Looks like it might be now. Yeah, and I believe if these teams and drivers have to make a green flag pit stop, more than likely they're looking at four tires here instead of the two they were thinking of strategy under a caution situation. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of them were planning on maybe seeing a caution before now and trying to get to if that happens. If it goes the full cycle, which we're just about there, I expect every one of these teams to change four tires under green because they'll have to take two cans of fuel to make it to the end. So that's what I expect to see here. It's going to get him he, here. Yeah, he's going to have him here. Well, Kyle held on as long as he could. A car that's gotten a little bit tight. Separate yourself. Be protective. Still out. 79 laps to go. Brad Keselowski to the race lead. Now well, this two car is up in that number one spot, Vince. It's still about a dozen laps before Keselowski is uh, looking to get into that window as far as the pit stop is concerned. Not a single chassis adjustment on this car all day. A minor air pressure adjustment on one stop. That's the only changes they've made to it. And as you guys noted earlier, other than that first pit stop, when they went with left sides only, Paul Wolf has had four tires on that car all afternoon long. Keselowski, very comfortable. we got a problem with the 48. 48 is into the wall, Vince. Jimmy Johnson has hit the wall. Put a wheeler on here, buddy. We'll get some new tires on there. We'll take a look at it. No brakes. Come in here, we'll get a look at it. Yeah, he's hit it hard. He's got some problems too, but he's hit no brakes. That means he probably broke the brake rotor on the right front. They'll have to replace that. Running seventh at the Ron, time. Ron, you go over and do the right front handed. Ron Malik into the right front. Go look at that. And all the makings there of one of those situations like we saw with David Gilliland earlier in the race. Well, I mean, he, he's, he's been running hard. We saw him trying to search around, trying to find some speed. Back it up. He was probably up. overworking those brakes. And all right, you guys, right remember, we're going to have to pick the car up first to get the jack underneath it. Once again, that worst possible spot, this tire is going to let go, coming full bore out of turn four, mm -hmm. hard hit. That's exactly where we saw, I guess it was Gillen, did yep. the same thing, right the same spot. You know, he'd been getting told that the others were running in a higher place, that they needed to pick the speed up they could to search around. And uh, when you do that, you'll you'll run a little Put bit the tire harder. On there. We'll get it in the garage and we'll get it changed. 
may need some more break to, to do that. Jimmy's one that uses a little more break than some others to make his car work and, and, and get the speed out of it. And sometimes that's the chance that you take. Saw the tire changer there signaling uh, the, the uh, cut signal to Chad that there was more damage there than they were going to be able to fix on the pit stop. And Jimmy Johnson's team is going to push this car behind the wall. What a moment in this championship. Wow. mentioned as Brandt took the lead that opened it up to where he Give was the leader the in points by three but that is obviously going to be much greater before this day is over as long as Brad doesn't have any problems now while the 48 goes to the garage Keselowski and the other lead lap cars come to pit road for stops these are with 75 to go this would be potentially the final pit stop of the race Dave if Harvin gives up third position, his car had been just a little bit difficult to turn, but really not that bad. Pretty good for him. We'll see if they go for two or four. It looks like it's going to be four for Harvick. Jamie. Denny Hamlin said he started really loose, then it got tight. They're going to take four tires here. Two didn't work. Air pressure adjustment. They'll fill it up with Sunoco fuel. Then. Brad Keselowski says the car is pretty good. I said, I don't really know what to ask for. It's a little free early in the run, but otherwise good. It's a four-tire change, Doc. Four tires for Kyle Busch, and the car got tight. Chassis adjustment, change air pressure. Got to get it full of fuel. They said, get it full of fuel. Hopefully they did. He is down and away. First one off of pit road. Little loss of track position for Keselowski there. A little slow on the pit stop. Yeah, the two car had some kind of problem on the right side. Jack Nan was real late getting around. He was trying to make it up on pit road. I hope he wasn't speeding right there. Yeah. The bigger story. Keselowski losing a little ground on the pit stop, but gaining ground, big picture. Jimmy Johnson, the car in the garage area after hitting the wall. Listen. of 312 in Phoenix, perhaps a season-defining moment for Jimmy Johnson. The scene in the NASCAR Sprint Cup garage as they attempt to piece together Jimmy Johnson's battered car, get him back on the racetrack, salvage every possible point they can to try and go to the Homestead Miami Speedway and 
take a shot at the championship. We're getting ready to restart. With 71 laps to go, Brad Keselowski leading, coming onto the pit road. He's going to restart in fourth position after some trouble on his pit stop. Yeah, that's just not legal to run up beside somebody on pit road under caution. I don't know if Brad was going a little slow or not, but uh, he's still not supposed to, to make a pass on pit road. Yeah, you're talking like, about Kyle there. The, yeah, yeah the lug nuts yeah. falling off there. It looked yeah, like the problems in on the pit stop. 71 to go. Denny Hamlin looking to the inside of Kyle Busch, who's going to get the race lead back. And right now, Keselowski just wants to get clear of Kevin Harvick in this 29, where he can get back down at the bottom. And we'll be messing around on the outside of this racetrack, even though this crew's widened out. He's able to do that. Kurt Busch, free pass at the caution flag, back onto the lead lap after the extra pit stop earlier. Ryan Newman, wave around to the lead lap after being off sequence and three wide across the dog leg. Mark Martin on the move in the 55. Man, getting a little racy here. Car looks like it's a lot better than it was the first half of the race. Joey Logano, Jeff Gordon, 24 and 20. Paul Menard back deeper in traffic than he's been in a little while. Yeah, he's had an outstanding day. Here comes Keselowski trying to take over second. I'm sure Denny Hamlin was glad to get four tires on that race car. It did not like those two tires that they put on the time before. Kozlowski worked on Kyle Busch for the race lead before the caution flag. It took him several laps to finally make, be able to clear him, even though he had that inside opening to him a number of times. Yeah, this is a very fine line right now as a driver because Kozlowski knows the problems of 48. This is a huge day in his championship bid, but he knows he has the race car to win this race, and Denny Hamlin's keeping him from getting up there to the 18 at this point in time. But do you push it? Taking an outside peek there. Or is that just to make Denny think he's taking an outside peek? Denny's having, having a little more trouble keeping pace this run because you can see that the 18 car really getting away from these two. I'm sure Brad's thinking, I don't want him to get too far ahead of me. Hey, he doesn't want that, and he doesn't want anyone to get to his rear bumper where that might create a situation. So uh, Brad wants to be aggressive right here. He wants to get out there. He'd like to be able to kind of get himself in that position where it's just him running the, the 18 down if he possibly can. That 18's been awfully fast all day. And this going on while Jimmy Johnson sits in the garage area. The big turning point. Wiggle, wiggle there. Yep. Yeah, that might. That's what uh, Keselowski was looking for. It's just that little bit of an opening. Hamlin's not willing to give this up either because he knows in a longer run, most of the time, his car's been a little better than the 18. That would be his shot at trying to win. Whoa. That's close. Here comes Harvick for three wide. And there goes Keselowski out of the middle of that. You can see behind them, they're going to have some more company. you got Clint Boyer and Casey Kane closing. This is just what Brad did not want to get into right here. Whoa, contact there. Harvick and Hamlin right in front of the new championship leader. I say that as they run, knowing Brad's got to finish the race, and this certainly has potential to mess that up. this for second place behind Kyle Busch and while Jimmy Johnson's team continues to work on that car Dave 
focus is on the right front suspension, Allen. They've got the cutting torch in there right now. They're trying to remove things, replacing. You can't tell if they're going to try to replace the entire right front spindle, but that is a part that they want to be very concerned with at this point. Uh, Goodyear did report that it was a melted bead on that right front tire, that excessive brake heat. And Jimmy had reported that his car was tight, that it was not turning. And that combination apparently led to the failure that we saw and possibly the end of Jimmy's championship run this year. Yeah, when the race car gets tight, uh, you're only one of the only things you can do. Well, there's two things you can do as a driver. You can slow down, which is just going to decrease your speed, or you can keep driving at your pace and just use a little bit more brake. But that's the chance that you take. So Johnson in the garage, Kozlowski back to fighting with Denny Hamlin for second, while Kyle Busch is motored away to a 3.2 second lead with 60 to go. The semifinal race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season down to its final 54 laps in the Wild West, the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, where the racing version of Gunslingers came to try and see who'd walk away with the advantage in the chase for the trophy. Did not work out Jimmy Johnson's favor today. This duel in the desert saw Johnson take the first blow. And the 48 team back in the garage area working on their car to try and get its very heavily damaged right front suspension repaired and salvage what they can out of this day while Brad Keselowski runs in third position. After leading laps earlier in this race he lost the lead on the last set of pit stops a minute ago. You got breathing room out to cool your jets here. Been reminded to let you know who's sitting in the garage right now. Just big picture please. Joey Meyer, the spotter, talking to Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, I mean, you got to say it. You got to tell him you know he knows. But uh, you just got to say, hey, you just got to make sure we keep the big, big, big picture in mind. And I think Brad's done that really all, all season and even this entire chase. I think he's kept the big picture in mind. He's doing a good job right now. He's got a really good car. I think he's got a car that's maybe capable of winning. Uh, he can get kind of get by this 11 car and see if he can make some headway on Kyle Busch. He's gotten out there about three seconds. So. Yeah, I'd like to say it's probably something they felt like you need to say but this driver is so aware of everything in these races I've just been amazed at him 
Yeah, not that you, every driver wouldn't know that your competitor sitting in the garage, but just the calls that he's made, the things that he's done from inside that race car that most drivers out here don't do. And uh, just a cool customer. Checking out our Mobile One telemetry from onboard Brad Kozlowski's car. And he has the fastest lap that's been run here today, 26.74. Two car looks pretty strong here, Vince. What are they thinking the rest of the way? Yeah, they're real happy with it. No problem on fuel, as you would understand. They are good to go. Brad asked to Paul Wolf about it. Paul says, no problem whatsoever. He said, you don't even really have to save. We're that good. You know, back to what you guys were talking about, his perspective. Roger Penske told me this morning and used the analogy of Keselowski having a big windshield. He sees the big picture, and you rarely have to remind him of it. Every now and then, as we heard just a few moments ago, but it's one of the things that impresses Roger Penske the most about his driver, Brad Keselowski. Jamie Little. And the man who he is all over and trying to wear out is Denny Hamlin. This 11 car has been good on four tires all day, but Denny's saying right now, way too loose. Remember, he led 46 laps earlier today, but just cannot reach the 18, his teammate. We take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Denny Hamlin's team, fastest four-tire pit stop today. Yeah, 11-8. Boys getting it done. Yes, they are. You can get it done with unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app. Only from Sprint, get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. So, Dale, I know you've been inside these cars in one of these championship situations. Brad Kozlowski and Jimmy Johnson have had the mindset, we've got to go all out, we've got to race as hard as we can for wins because that's what they've had to do. Now it's changed. How does that, ch I mean, does that change in any measurable way what you're doing? Uh, I think in some cases, just as we saw Brad racing with Denny Hamlin for that second spot, it, it changes just how aggressive you might would be if the situation were a little bit different. If Jimmy Johnson were still running there inside the top 10, I'll assure you that Brad would have forced that issue a little bit more to get that second spot away where he could try to go chase down the 18 of Kyle Busch and, and see if he could win this race because he knew he was going to need those points. Right now, the focus is totally different as a driver. You still have to run hard. You can't just back out. You need this third place finish. And I, I guess... Another area where I, was, where I was thinking was, we talked about pins and needles today. Yeah. Does that put him more on pins and needles <laughs> now than it might have before when he was just racing for, for the win? You know, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a little more nervous because it's there right now for your taking. You know that the whole championship is in your hands now, so it makes you a little bit more nervous with that. Remember that theory about the bubbles? Just making you wear your stuff out here. You're doing good. Yeah, I'm going to blow a beat if I run behind him like that that long. Well, i gotta, I got to lay up a little bit here for a minute. Yeah, he's just, one thing he can do is just try to save that right front, keep the heat out of it, stay off the brake pedal. You can run pretty fast laps and use a lot less brake, but I'm sure after what he's seen with Jimmy Johnson, that that's exactly what he's doing right now. And Jimmy Johnson had to run that hard because Brad Keselowski was in front of him and leading the race or contending for the lead in the late laps here at Phoenix.
caution as you saw a hard crash for David Reagan he's driven around pitch strategy here Brad Keselowski comes in from third position while Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin and a few others stay out Vince they discussed uh, how many laps he had on his tires 32 and how many cars are on the lead lap 19 and both Brad Keselowski and crew chief Paul Wolf agreed let's bring it in put on some tires left sides only for the two So eight cars do not pit out of the 19 that are on the lead lap. Yeah, I would have. I think I would have wanted to get a right front on that thing, though. With what we've seen these cautions there, almost every one of these cautions have been for a right front tire going down. And this would probably be another one here. David Reagan with a crash in turn four. Oh. Three of those we've seen today. Hard crashes in turn four. Jimmy Johnson back on track in 33rd place, 38 laps down. Dropping to the tail of the field as they double up for the restart that'll come with 35 laps to go. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Casey Kane, Flint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano did not pit under the yellow flag. Brad Keselowski first off the pit lane with just left side tires on the two. He restarts eighth, 35 to go. teammate coming over Joey Logano oh, oh not flying around there see Logano oh, oh, yeah Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth three wide Martin gives way Just two tires. There are only a few that got four, and they're well back in the line. Some of the thinking here with Paul Wolf was probably that he knew a lot of cars were pit to get tires, and he did not want Brad to be on defense trying to fend off people that had tires. And this kind of puts him on offense now, where he can actually go out there and pass cars. Vince, what, we, what, what was the thinking in the two pit? 
Yeah, well, you think they maybe would go with four or right sides, considering the right front issues that we've seen today. But Paul Wolf said the left sides have shown more wear, and that's their chief concern at this point. They just felt like that was the way to go just to be safe. Trouble off turn two. Got a car spinning. Tony Stewart. My name's Gar. The 14 car running in 14th place at the time. That didn't sound healthy. Almost looked like Menard ran out of brakes there, and then Stewart's going to run up. And yeah, I noticed in the. the Yellow Goodyear paint was worn off the left rear tire. Now see why. See how difficult it is to see down into turn one. Wow. So Ryan Newman was the one that bobbled, and when Tony tried to cut under him, Eric Almarola got him and turned him around. Restart with 28 laps to go. Casey Kane to the inside of leader Kyle Busch in the 18. Not for long. Kevin Harvick showed some muscle we haven't seen in quite a while. Remember, Kevin finished second here back in March. Mixing it up. Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, 15 and 24. That's for fifth and sixth place. I'm not sure about the, the decision to pit that two car. He's back in a lot. He's giving away valuable points right now. Harvick trying to get second away from Kane. on Mark Martin for ninth place and he picks up the spot. 
Remember, he restarted eighth after the pit stop a minute ago. Lost a position on the run. Lost another spot P9 on this right restart. Now, P9 walking away from them guys behind you. And now he's gained one back. Yeah, it's just like it didn't do much for his car to get those two tires. All he did was give it the track position. And like I said, they'll put him into some pretty compromising positions. Housekeeping, Greg Biffle got the free pass on the caution flyer. Danica Patrick got the free pass and is back on the lead lap on this caution. 20th position. That slow car on the apron was David Reagan. The car involved in the accident a minute ago as the 3014 continues to try and get that car repaired and back up to speed. Wow, Casey Kane hanging it out there. Just joining us, the big story of the day came with 77 laps to go when Jimmy Johnson, running in seventh position, hit the wall off of turn number four. He's returned to the track. He's 38 laps down in 33rd place and cannot gain any more positions for the remainder of this race. Brad Keselowski was leading at the time. They had uh, trouble on a pit stop, lost a few positions, then made the decision to pit again when some others did not. And that's Keselowski there fighting with Matt Kenseth for the number eight spot while Johnson just tries to finish the rest of the laps. Well, each of these spots that he can gain now are just increasing his championship lead as he goes to Homestead next week. So very important. Other major story of the day is the guy that's leading, Kyle Busch in the 18 car. He's been out in front of this race for 223 of 290 laps. Denny Hamlin has led 46, but predominantly it's been Kyle Busch early and often. One stretch of the race, a long green flag stretch, where his car's handling went away toward the end of the run, and he slipped back. But they sure have this 18 car in the wind today. Yeah, we'll just have to see here. Uh, this is not a very long run to the end, but they will have had these tires on for a little over 70 laps. If it goes away here in these next 20, that gives Harvick or Kane or possibly Hamlin an opportunity. Boy, Harvick's having a great race, and it's really coming at a good time. <laughs> RCR just had a tough weekend. Yesterday in the nationwide race, they wrecked the car of Elliot, Elliot Sadler and had to go to back of car, wrecked it, lost him. All the, the lead that they held, they were tied for the lead, lost all the points in the championship. And then Burton wrecked two cars in practice. It's the uh, real comeback from RCR if they can win this thing. Kevin Harvick got his first top 10 finish of the chase last Sunday in Texas. He may get his first top five of the chase today here in Phoenix, though we've still well, got a little ways to he's go. He's catching his 18. He's a little quicker than that. But so far today, Kyle Busch has been dominant. And for leading all of those laps today, we named Kyle Busch, our Goodyear Superior Performer. They have been tough. Well, they've just been outstanding throughout the chase as far as fast race cars. Uh, they've had a couple of situations uh, that have cost them good finishes, but uh, they've been right in the mix inside the top five a lot throughout these uh, 10, well, nine races so far to this point. in every inch of the racetrack off a of turn two. Joey Logano running in seventh in the 20 car just in front of Brad Kozlowski. Logano, another driver that's really had a good chase so far. Uh, done, done very well. And of course, won his ninth nationwide race yesterday. Just had an incredible year there. Yeah. About to give up a spot here. Yeah, I talked to Roger Penske in the garage area this morning. They're really excited about Get Joey Logano in their camp next year, and, the, and the, what we'll see with these two drivers as teammates. Joey Logano with four top ten finishes in these eight races in the chase so far, and in position to try and make it five for nine. Kyle Busch has been in this position on a number of occasions this season and going back into last season where he's led a lot of laps in a race and circumstances found a way to change things at the end of the day. That pin, back to the pins and needles theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a team that's had so many things to happen to him and Kyle Busch is a driver just, I'm sure he's sitting there 
hearing every little sound and wondering what in the world may happen this time because the last seven races that he's been he's led the most laps he has not won doc are they on pins and needles in the 18 pit well indeed they are exactly what dj said i was sitting with dave rogers this morning and they said you know the you know the numbers don't you doc i said yeah last seven times we led the most laps we didn't win in fact this car he's in today led 302 laps at dover delaware but with 20 laps to go it went away because of fuel mileage we have not been able to catch a break late in the race maybe today their luck changes well it's got uh, 13 more circuits around here doc to try and change that trend and uh, lead the most laps and take home the trophy. Yeah, I'm watching Harvick. He's moving all. Uh oh, got a little smoke going here now. The corners maybe have a tire rub on the left front. Just watching Harvick though. He's moving all around the racetrack trying to find something. Yeah, he picked up about a tenth of a second that last time. So he's still in the mix. Bring it in, we got a tire going. Sam running 19th, last on the lead lap. Oh, these two have got together before. Trouble, it is Hornish into the wall in turn three. Caution flag is out. That the beginning of Sam's troubles. And this, the continuation. Yep, that tire was rubbing really bad. They tried to get him in the pit, but didn't get him there quick enough. And that was Danica taking over that 19th spot. So she's had a very solid day here. Front just gave way. Yep. Oh boy. I'll tell you what, that was hard lift. Wow. Yeah, he just they were trying to get it to the pit road. Uh, just 11 laps to go. I expect everybody staying out here. Keslowski's in seventh. He'll get to start on the inside lane again. Probably a good thing for him, I would say. They're pretty conservative on these restarts here in the last couple. What it does do is it gives Kevin Harvick a chance to be alongside Kyle Busch for a restart. Couple of guys really hungry for a long awaited win. Yeah, he's real hungry. He didn't get a very good restart though the last time. Yeah, and Keselowski does have the freshest tires. Uh, albeit that's just the, the two left side tires they put on. There are a few cars coming down pit road. 13th place Mark Martin, the first one to make the move to pit road in the 55 as they push the Hornish car behind the wall. Bobby Labonte, the free pass under the caution flag. See, I can't believe that we see this 99 car has just not been very good this year. I can't believe come to Phoenix and he's not any better than he's been. I expect him to maybe come back alive here and be one of the cars that'd be in the mix. Yeah, we saw Mark Martin earlier in the day uh, take two tires and lead for a little while, but uh, has generally been somewhere around that 8th to 12th spot most of the day. So we're going to have a restart inside of 10 laps to go in the second to last race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. Just joining us, the story of the day. This man, the five-time champ, Jimmy Johnson, leading the championship beginning the afternoon, running in seventh position with 77 laps to go when this happened off turn four. Yeah, Jimmy had been running extremely hard, uh, searching around, trying to get some more speed out of his car. And a lot of times you do that, you use a little bit more brake to make that happen. Melted the bead on the right front, hard impact in the turn for a while. 38 laps in the garage for repairs. And Johnson is going to finish no better than 33rd position today. While Brad Keselowski started back in 14th position, he's led laps today. And right now he's running in seventh, Vince. With Paul Wolf, the crew chief for uh, Brad Keselowski. Paul, just a few laps to go. What's your thought process here? Yeah, we just kind of stay out of trouble here. It's uh, probably a bad call, I guess, to come get tires. Thing just wouldn't go on the left sides there. Uh, so we lost a few spots. But uh, and we still get a good finish out of it. So uh, middle light Dodge has been fast all day. Uh, we had a little issue on the pit stop before last and uh, lost the lead. And uh, just kind of trying to recover from that. Thanks, Paul. Alan. So we get set for the restart, Vince. It'll come with eight laps to go. And 20 cars on the lead lap. Kyle Busch, the race leader, with Kevin Harvick. Now to his outside as Busch selects the inside line this time. Casey Kane, Denny Hamlin, doubled up in row two. 
Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, the top eight. Side wall. Got, looks like some damage on the left rear. Almost somebody got into his left rear. I didn't cut the tire. We stay under green for the moment. Jeff was running in fifth place. Matt Kenseth showing some smoke. Remember Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, some of the guys that pitted under this last caution. Have fresher tires. Matt's got a left front tire rub. Doesn't look as bad as Sam Hornish's was when he blew it out. And he's still got to be a little concerned. Back to look at what happened to Jeff Gordon running in fifth position. Racing with Clint Boyer in the 15. There's that contact on the left rear. Well, a good day gone bad again for Jeff Gordon in this chase. Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano for sixth place. While Kevin Harvick has opened up about 10 car lengths on Kyle Busch for the race lead. What makes this sport so great? We just didn't see Harvick show anything that would give us any idea that even though this is a great racetrack for him, that they had found enough stuff that would get them in this position. Got to hand it to Gil Martin, the crew chief. He must have made some really good adjustments on that 29. You can see, though, that Keselowski wants just one more point if he can get by Joey Logano. Jeff Gordon was shown the black flag. He's turning oh. Clint Boyer into the wall, collecting Joey Logano. Caution flag is out. Alvarola slides in. Did the leader take the white flag before the caution came out? Let me to the garage straight, right? Fire's gone. Fire's gone. Yeah, the fire's back. Late laps retaliation. Fire if you want to stop right there. There's a fire truck they get to you if you stop right there. Checking with NASCAR. The caution was out before the white flag. We're not done with Is this race yet. No, it's down. Now it's down. You're good. Just stay on. And mayhem in the late laps here. At Phoenix, you saw the first incident that cut the tire with Jeff Gordon, put him into the wall. He basically waited on Clint Boyer to come around and took him out. All this happened right in front of Brad Keselowski, and he was racing Joey Logano, and I was afraid they were going to get caught up, or, or Brad was going to get caught up into it. He somehow got through it. Jeff has been summoned to the NASCAR hauler for a post-race visit. They said they were going to let him have at it. That's having at it right there. Uh, that's a year's worth of frustration. Oh, conflict. The crews are in it. And somewhere in the middle of that is Jeff Gordon.
And I'm sure Clint Boyer wants his opportunity at this. Can't really blame him. That's stupid. Now the tempers have boiled over here in Phoenix after late race contact between Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer. And then a payback. And there are going to be a lot of visitors to the uh, NASCAR transporter after the race. Boyer's crew chief, Boyer. Gordon's crew chief, Gordon. I'll bet the team owners are in there too. This cost Boyer a lot. It was going to be third in points, just a with still points an behind. Yeah, with an opportunity, just a few points behind Jimmy Johnson. He was maybe seven or eight points as they were running behind Jimmy Johnson. The race has been red flagged, by the way. The cars are stopped on the track while they clean up the speedway and get ready for a green white checker finish yeah there's a huge amount of all over in turns three and four and probably on around where clint boyer had driven his car around for a while and uh, a lot of torn up cars but uh, it's going to take a while to get this racetrack in raceable condition again So we had shown you the replays of the initial contact between Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer racing for fifth position. Then this, the payback. As Brad Keselowski, the championship leader, right in front of him, finds enough room to get by. See how Marola got in the oil there and couldn't get his car under control. See, Clint, he's trying to figure out which way to go. He knows that Jeff's mad. He thought maybe his best shot was to go Still there. Still there. Jeff is just very determined to take care of business. That was a real act of a champion. You okay there? I can think of is ugly ugly situation and uh, certainly it got uglier back in the garage area Jamie yes it certainly did and it's not over right now Brian Patty keeping an eye on his driver Clint Boyer who right now has pretty much lost his mind Brian what led to that first of all uh, I guess they rubbed uh, getting in turn three obviously didn't see it I saw the 24 uh, gets the fence you know but I don't know. It's kind of crazy that a champion will take out like that, but two races, you know, Homestead, if we have nothing to lose, I'm pretty sure we'll get it, you know, pretty exciting down there, but this is a freaking shame that uh, this team is running so hard every week that shit like that happens. And Brian Patty just told his team, try to get the car finished, and we want to apologize for the language used. It is an unfortunate situation. You heard him talk about the championship repercussions here. They were third in points. And this still is going on down here between the two teams. And Clint Boyer is out in the middle, and Michael Waltrip is holding him back right now, Alan. What a scene. Now, all this going on as the leader was coming to get the white flag. NASCAR has gone back, checked the cameras and the whole process, the electronic system that they go through, and determined that Kevin Harvick had not gotten the white flag before the caution came out. All we got to do is look at the field. We were over the start finish line. We took the white. You say, oh, we were across the start finish line. I was looking at it. There ain't no way. Obviously, Gil Martin and Richard Childress disagree with NASCAR's call there. I'm sure they'd probably have support from their driver, too, if he had any idea exactly when that came. But it's hard to tell as the driver exactly when it happened. But, uh, wow. 
There's too much going on, but uh, Kevin Harvick's going to have to somehow get it together. He raced that he thought that he had well in hand. That is not a happy looking Richard Childress. There's a bunch of people not very happy right now. Mm. So the action on the track and then the action continues in the garage area. Don't know how you'd call the third man in there. I think Gordon was kept away from the action, actually. Yeah, I thought he was at the bottom of that yeah. pile. It looks like they got him pinned into the toolbox, huh? Accurate observation yeah. from Joey Meyer and Spot man. Brad Kozlowski. So there they sit, the remainder of the field, while the track gets cleaned up and we get set to go for two or more laps of racing. And a crazy turn of events here at Phoenix, starting with the last restart when Kevin Harvick went around the outside of Kyle Busch and got the lead. The contact between Boyer and Gordon, the retaliation, and then there. Definitely caution was out before Harvick got there. And I'm, I can see Harvick looking at, he probably looked at the white flag. He didn't see the light. Yeah. So, Kevin, you got some more work to do. Caution came out before the leader started the last lap. And again, if you're new to NASCAR, if the leader had taken the white flag and started the last lap and the caution came out, then the race would not be restarted as it is with the race under caution at its scheduled distance. There'll be a little overtime racing to try and get the fans a green flag finish. Jamie. Alan Gustafson, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon. Alan, I was listening on the radio. That was premeditated there. He waited out there for him. Why did he get so upset by that move? They weren't racing for the lead. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's about the fifth time that, that, that uh, he's run us over. And after a while, you get really frustrated with that. You know, we all work really hard on these cars, and, and, and Jeff races everybody with a lot of respect. And, uh, you know, evidently it was, he had enough. And, and uh, you know, if you're going to play that way, if you're going to race that way, then you shouldn't be upset when you get it back. You're the one that has to fix this race car now. What are your thoughts and impressions on Jeff wrecking this car? Uh -huh. I love Jeff Gordon. I stand behind him 100 percent, and that's what we had to do. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll fix him all day long. And, and you know, he's a great race car driver. And he knows, you know, everybody out here will tell you he's as, as good a race car driver and, and as a competitor as there is. And and uh, he, if he's tired of it, then it, it means it's time. Have you ever seen him that fired up? I was pretty fired up. All right, let's go over to Vince. With Richard Childress, team owner on that uh, 29 car for Kevin Harvick, and there was some dispute as to whether Kevin had gotten past the line before the yellow came out. It looks like replays indicate he had not gotten to the line in time, but you know, we're going to show you the replay here, Richard, but just thoughts on uh, how Kevin has run today and uh, being in this position. Well, we felt that we, we had crossed the line, or we were right there on the line when the caution came out. They got to show it to us in a different angle. Yeah, there's the replay indicating the yellow is out prior to uh, getting to that line, but uh, nice resurgence from the 29 car today and still with the opportunity to win this race. Yeah, the fuel stuff right now. Short on fuel? Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Alan? Well, that makes another interesting yeah. layer to this onion, doesn't it? Yeah, but that video replay is clear. They did not have the caution flag, or the uh, white flag before the caution came out. And again, the way that all that works, there are time codes, time stamps on all of those video machines. And we sync the time code on the video replay to the time code on NASCAR, the camera that follows that caution light. And that's how we match it up to show you exactly what was happening at that moment the caution light came on. Looks like Brad's checking his Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> is he tweeting his seat? He could be. 
He's got a good one. He had a good seat for that last one. I somehow, that. I somehow expect he's commenting on what just happened in front of him. He could be doing that, and he may be seeing how, many, how big a lead he's going to have going into next week. Yeah. As he might uh, be checking NASCAR.com. Yeah, see if what, what's going on as far as uh, exactly where he's going to have. I'm sure that he's calculating in his mind where he's going to have to finish. He probably already knows that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this isn't over yet, so we got racing to do. Anything can happen here. We've obviously seen these drivers are going to sit over here. The tires are going to lose pressure. Uh, they've been on them for a while. These cars are not going to drive very good whenever they go back to racing. Luke Boyer headed out of the garage area. Now he's headed in the direction of pit lane, so we'll see if there's uh, enough rolling of this 15 car and if they'll let it get back into the race. I'm not sure about that. I can't even imagine with all the fluid that thing lost that it could could stay under power for a green white checker, but uh, they'll do what they can here. Yeah, and they can't work on the car during this red flag and we saw that it had a lot of problems with it. I'm not sure that you can get it back out. Yeah, that's not what he had on his mind when he exited that car. If it would roll or not, but uh, I know Jeff Gordon's a feisty young man, but uh, or he's not that young anymore, but this is a guy you wouldn't want to tangle with, but they have had some issues along the way. And uh, as a driver, I've kind of been on both sides. You, you get fed up with it. And, you know, sometimes now I'm sure that Jeff will probably be in the situation that you wish you would have taken a little time and thought about it and gone and talked about it possibly. But uh, sometimes you just take it in your own hands. Yeah, I can remember Martinsville early in the year when it looked like Jeff Gordon was going to win that race. Got wrecked out by a big, bold move by Boyer. I'm sure that Gordon hadn't forgotten that one. Went three wide on a late restart down into turn one and Gordon got knocked up out of the way. Boyer got collected also, but that's certainly the first of a couple of different times they've tangled this year. So Boyer's car sitting in its pit box. Brian Patty and crew there waiting to jump on it and work on it. Remember, you can't work on a car under the red flag under NASCAR rules. They can look at it and try and make plans for their repair effort. Maybe just a few weeks ago at Martinsville, they had a little run in at the very end of that race, also. Yep. Talked about this back in uh, April. Gordon led most of the race. Three wide into turn one on the restart. And Ryan Newman went on to score the win. When they get together, it's big. Yeah. <laughs> and it's usually in the late laps, apparently. Well. I'm not sure how they're going to get that car back into this race for these last few laps, but they're going to try. And what set all this up? The initial action and the ultimate reaction. It's just some hard racing right here. They get together. It's just a miscalculation. I don't think that Boyer did anything on purpose. And I'm trying to see right here. It's like I think Gordon maybe tried to go back at him when they got to the corner, and that's what got him out of shape and got in the wall. Yeah, I believe I believe it might have cut the left rear tire, in, possibly. I'm not sure if it's down or if it just rubbed. I, it looks like it's still rolling pretty good, but uh, this is the big one. When, if that wasn't big enough, it got bigger in the, in the pit area after all this. When the bench is emptied, if you will. Big, big mess in the late laps at Phoenix. They'll talk about this one for a long time. NASCAR's Sprint Cup Series at Phoenix is brought to you by Doomsday Preppers on National Geographic. Check your local listings. Sylvania Silver Star Ultra Headlights. Remember, headlights dim over time. Replace before burnout. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And Ford, and the go further with Ford Night.
And our aerial coverage from Phoenix today provided by Goodyear from pit lane to victory lane. Every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. The second to last round of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, that, that last round was a good one. <laughs> Is in its final laps. The pit lane open here before a green-white checker finish at Phoenix, Matt Kenseth. It looks like in ninth place is going to be the first one and one of few to duck in to the pit road. So what seems like about 20 minutes ago now, actually probably was a little more than 20 minutes ago, we had a restart where Kevin Harvick went around the outside of Kyle Busch. Kyle, the race's dominant driver, and Kevin got the lead away. That was with eight laps to go. Then the big mess between Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer, the 15-minute red flag to clean it up. And now they're going to do it again for a green-white checker finish. The first attempt at the green-white checker finish. And you heard from Richard Childress a minute ago, fuel is a concern for the 29. Other big story on the day, of course, is the championship. Jimmy Johnson in a wreck earlier while running seventh with 77 to go. Brad Keselowski running in fifth position while Johnson is in 33rd place, 38 laps down. And he can, he can finish no higher than that 33rd. The top four cars pitted on lap 237. Uh, last pitted, uh, looks like Keselowski was the last one that, that came down pit road. He's got, he last pitted at 274, so he's got plenty of fuel for a green-white checker or, or more. Clint Boyer's team apparently not going to be able to do anything with that 15 car and are going to push it back behind the wall. Kyle Busch, let's check on his fuel situation, Doc. Well, Dave Rogers told Kyle, save fuel, save fuel, buddy. We're close. And he also said, by the way, this is your turn, your restart to get him back. Go out and win this thing. Dave. Doc, I just checked with Gil Martin, Kevin's crew chief. I said, can he make it on fuel? Gil said, we'll see. Alan. What else can happen today? Well, we'll see. I tell you, they still have a pretty slick racetrack. I know NASCAR got it cleaned up as good as they can, but there's going to be speedy dry steel, and I'm not sure that it's soaked up all of that oil. This could be exciting off turn four. And Kevin Harvick, the race leader, has chosen the outside lane for the restart. Remember, it was in the outside lane that he passed Kyle Busch on the restart with eight to go, adding a lap to the caution. That's going to make this fuel situation just a little bit, a little bit tighter. Yep. They have a couple of other people to get in the proper order for the restart. And since final finishing positions are at stake here. Most so teams, these teams were planning on this race being 312 laps. It's already 316. While they work around the speedway slowly under caution before the finish, we remind you that Tuesday on ESPN, four championship coaches headline the State Farm Champions Classic from the Georgia Dome, side of the Final Four. At 7, Tom Izzo Spartans take on Bill Self's Jayhawks. Then at 9, the Blue Devils and Wildcats square off for the first time in a decade. The State Farm Champions Classic, Michigan State, Kansas at 7, Duke, Kentucky at 9. Tuesday on ESPN, watch ESPN in 3D, ESPN the home of college hoops. We check with Jamie. And we're back here at the NASCAR hauler. You see four policemen guarding it. That is because Jeff Gordon and his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, are in there talking to NASCAR. Now, I was just told that these guys will escort Jeff Gordon back to his bus. Meanwhile, to my left, Clint Boyer's car is back in the garage, and so is Clint Boyer. Guys? Restart. Two laps to go. Will it be Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, or someone else? Keselowski slipping while Harvick clears Kyle Busch for the race lead. Danica Patrick into the wall, spinning back down into traffic. I will throw the caution. White flag is out. out. This is the last lap of the race. Does Harvick have enough fuel to get back here? See Kyle Busch almost spinning there inside of Denny Hamlin. They're coming to turn three. Patrick is driven away from the scene. The wall 
Drive spell yeah, for man. Kevin Harvick and Richard Childress Racing comes to a close at Phoenix. He slides to the finish line while they crash behind him. Keselowski threads the needle as cars crash to the checkered flag. I don't understand why they didn't throw the caution there. The 10 car was losing a lot of fluid. Mark Martin, Kurt Busch, Ryan Newman, all torn up. Patrick in the middle of it. Big hop out. Paul Menard. side of the new championship leader's car. He's lucky. That's all he's got. Very, very fortunate. Yeah, that's a situation where you can't let that dictate. When there's an accident, we have to, the caution has to be thrown. I realize what we've been through and trying to get this done, but there shouldn't, the circumstances shouldn't dictate that whatsoever. Still a great win for Harvick. Oh, what a great job he did of driving this car down victory. Past Kyle Busch on the outside on a restart with eight to go. Got away from Kyle Busch on the outside on a green-white checker restart. Managed to slide sideways a little bit through some of that liquid that it appeared was on the racetrack coming off turn four and get to the checkered flag. And for Kevin Harvick, a day that for so many others has resulted in mayhem and chaos. It's going to result in a victory celebration, the first one since September of 2011 for Harvick. Brad Keselowski will finish sixth. Well, while Brad looks at his race car, gathers his thoughts. Let's look at all that happened. Did it work? Yeah, he just got in the left rear. Danica, she just goes up and crashes pretty hard. Surprised the caution didn't come out here. And it should be thrown right there. Car sitting in the middle of the racetrack. Look at the streak. Wow. Brad Keselowski, very, very fortunate that he got back there without more damage and, wow, some hard hits right oh, here. Wow, look oh. at this lick Danica. So it's right there, huh? What a mess. Look, look at, at that Harvick. street. Look at it. See Harvick just power sliding through there. A lot of cars. Oh, man. Hmm. Kurt Busch hit a ton. Now, right now, took a couple of hard hits. That's a hard way to get a top five finish, but that's what Newman did. All right, Trent, you have a car in the wall on the inside lane. Inside lane, coming to the checker here. Trent, come on through here. Come on through here. Just get through here. Just get through here. There you go. Well, I, I want to say it's P5. Big, big wreck behind you now. Going to have a big wreck behind you. A lot of well, Vince, uh, top six finish for Brad Keselowski and the championship lead heading to the final race. He's managing a smile, but uh, certainly was a hard-earned smile today. You're the championship leader. We'll address that in a moment. But first, how about the finish and everything you had to drive through to get there? You know, I raced pretty hard last week at Texas, and uh, a couple guys gave me flack for it. But there's a difference between racing hard and what we saw today. You know, that was, uh, you know, borderline ridiculous at times. Uh, but... Uh, well, we survived, and I'm proud of everyone on the Miller Lite team for that. Uh, we had a great car, and, and things just didn't quite play to, to our strengths, but that's okay. Uh, I felt very lucky to, to make it through all the corners today. You have a 21-point lead in the championship. What was your initial thought when you realized that Jimmy Johnson had been involved in the accident? Uh, my initial thought was I heard he blew a, a right front tire, um, and, and, you know, I was thinking, what conspiracy theorist is going to come up with a theory on this one? And then you realize that the same thing can happen to you, and so... You know, you try not to uh, try not to let that get into you too much and, and try to just focus on what you got and make sure you don't do, have the same problem. And, 
uh, you know, and that, that was really what I was thinking. Obviously, there's no guarantees. We could go next week to Homestead and have the same problem and, you know, Jimmy take the point lead back over. So uh, no guarantees, but very proud to have uh, that points lead heading into next week. Yeah, glad you're okay. I know there was some heavy contact there on that uh, car, Brad Keselowski. Dave? Since we are standing by with Jimmy Johnson, finishes 33rd today, 21 points behind. Jimmy, what is your view of the championship now? Uh, it's way, way out of our control, obviously, with uh, the problem we had today. Um, we still have to go to Homestead and race, and you know anything can happen down there, but uh, not the position we, we want to be in leaving Phoenix. So, you know, I, I feel terrible for uh, for my team and how hard these guys work. Everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, uh, Lowe's, Cobalt Tools, Chevrolet, you know, across the board, there's been a huge effort put into this to try to get us a championship, and uh, you know, I just hate for our uh, our day to turn out as it did today. But it's racing, and um, you know, we'll go to Homestead and do all we can down there and see see how things pan out. Jimmy, what was going on with the race car, and what were you trying to do with it when the accident occurred? Uh, we were cruising along, and you know, I think we're going to have a top 10 day, maybe a top 5 day if things worked out at the end. And uh, I had a slight vibration um, starting in the right front. Uh, I didn't know where it was really coming from, but clearly now it's it was the right front. And then as it was coming off of turn four, um, it it you know went down and straight in the wall I went. So. Uh, in another 30, 40 feet around the corner, I probably would have just had a flat and not hit the wall, but uh, where it let go, uh, I had a direct you know, line at the wall and, and knocked it down. It usually smiles on you. It didn't seem to that time. No, it's, it's the way, you know, way it goes. Anything can happen in racing. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of the year. I'm very proud of the effort my entire uh, Lowe's team has put in. I um, hate to see you know, it potentially end this way. But again, that's racing. I've been doing this a long time, and I've, I've won, won a few championships, and I've, I've lost a lot. Um, losing, losing isn't any fun. But I'll, we'll be back next weekend and next year, hungrier than ever, and, and do the best job we can. And Alan, double-checking timing and scoring. It is 20 points now that Jimmy is behind Brad Keselowski. Yeah, because the race ran some extra laps, Jimmy was able to gain one more spot and finish 32nd instead of the Yeah, he did. Third. We thought he could make a spot, but he did. And because the race yeah. went extra laps, he passed David Reagan there. Well, while Jimmy's left to answer the what happened question, Kevin Harvick is driven in to the winner's circle for the first time in a long time. Victory Lane, presented by Tire Rack. Oh, oh. And a shower of suds. <laughs> Courtesy of Kevin's sponsor. Looking over here and visit with Kevin. Hey, I gotta ask you, that final restart, all you got is a slick racetrack, lots of oil dry. You're almost out of gas and a fired up Kyle Busch beside, beside you. What are you thinking about? Well, I thought we were, you know, as crazy as this year has been for our Budweiser Chevy. It's, um, I was just thinking about not overdriving the first corner, whether we were going to run out of gas or not, how far the 18 was going to drive it in. But, and then they, they were really quick to throw the caution and then just let us race through oil. So I don't know. I guess it's hard for them to be right. But I got to thank all the fans and Sprint. Budweiser, Ream, Jimmy John, Chevrolet, Akuma, Realtree, Bad Boy Buggies, Hunt Brothers, everybody who helps us, uh, and thank you to all have served, who have served this country. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do today without that. Amen, certainly, brother. You know, the weekend began with everyone talking about where you're going to be in 2014, but let's talk about what this means to end the RCR drought and a drought for you in Victory Lane that's been over a year. Well, you know, it, it has been a struggle for, for the year, and it has been an interesting weekend, to say the least, but, um, you know, I just... I know that uh, these guys all want to win. I know Richards wanna, wants to win. And regardless of what happens in 14, we got the end of this year and we got the end, and we got all of next year. So we want to win races and, and we want to be competitive, and, and that's what we're here to do. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Kevin Harvick back in victory lane and a 38 race winless streak for Richard Childress Racing is over. And what a finish here as Kevin gives his wife Delana and son Keelan a kiss. Alan? So interesting. The weekend, Kevin Harvick in the news uh, on Saturday. The uh, report from uh, ESPN's Marty Smith that he would leave this team for Stuart Haas Racing after next season. And then for the first time in a long time, Harvick and Richard, Child Richard Childers Racing wind up in victory lane at the end of a bizarre race. If the finishing order doesn't change, NASCAR going to go back, as always, and review the final results. If things stay as they are now, Brad Keselowski goes to the final race next Sunday with a 20-point lead. And even if Jimmy Johnson gets max points, Brad can win the championship with a finish of 15th or better next Sunday at Homestead. The season finale on ESPN next weekend, beginning at 1.30 Eastern time. And, of course, tickets to join us at the racetrack and see a champion crown. Final thoughts on what you saw today? <laughs> we don't have enough time for all of that, but uh, congratulations, Kevin Harvick. I mean, taking a season that's been pretty miserable uh, by their standards and uh, bringing it home 
Kyle Busch once again lead, just dominating a race, and uh, then Brad Keselowski, his champ first championship in Sprint Cup Series right there before him. Yeah, I didn't see this coming. When we came into this, we thought it was going to be these two just going at it and going for the win here today. But we saw what all the stuff we saw from action on the track and off the track. It was a wild one. Everyone from third place down eliminated from the championship going to the next weekend. It's either going to be Kozlowski or Johnson at Homestead. Let's see. We had today uh, the five-time champ hit the wall and uh, put a severe hurting on his championship chances. We had a fight. We had a green-white checker finish. We had a guy who's been in the news for leaving a team after another year and change win the race. And we set up the season finale for next weekend. Uh, speaking of season finales, the Automobile Club of Southern California NHRA Finals at 7 Eastern tonight on ESPN2. And next weekend, we crown champions in the NASCAR Nationwide Series on Saturday with the Ford EcoBoost 300, 4 Eastern Time ESPN. And then the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Ford EcoBoost 400, next Sunday starting at 1.30 Eastern on ESPN. There is a lot to talk about from today's Phoenix race. And we'll do more on SportsCenter coming up next from here at Phoenix International Raceway. Mayhem, chaos, championship altering. <laughs> and I could go on and on, but I'm out of time. The end result, Brad Keselowski with a pretty decent lead in the championship going to the finale next week. And Kevin Harvick celebrating with Richard Childress in victory lane at Phoenix. SportsCenter is next.